Okay, so it is, uh, it is five o'clock Middlesex time. I will call the meeting to order. We need to, first of all, approve the minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 meeting. Is there a motion? Thank you, Randy. Second, Second. Victor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, we've approved our minutes. And uh, I forgot to welcome our guests. I apologize. Would you, again, would you introduce yourselves, please, just for the recording? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Shall we just start? Thank you, Shelly. Annette Laws. And? Annette Laws. Lister. You got Lister. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got Listers. You're, you're officially, you two are officially Listers. Yeah. So you're, you're in here with the rest of us. Reviewing and amending and approving the agenda for tonight's meeting, uh, May 16th, and we've made it our practice to get a motion on that as well. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Yes. I just want to make sure that people know that the oh, amended agenda yeah. you just saw yeah. yesterday includes a catering permit request for the local. That's the bottom of your amendment. So that, is it on the bottom? No. It Second. Is, yes. Second bullet. Oh, yeah. Okay. No? That's good. Okay. Okay, is there a motion to approve the agenda? The move that we approve the agenda for uh, May 16th, 2023. Thank you, Victor. Is there a second? I'll second it. Liz or Randy? Yep. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are now on to the interesting and, to me, slightly confusing subject of reviewing and approving proposals for town-wide property appraisal. Hmm. Listers to attend. Welcome, listers. Thank you. Okay, we sent so when I, 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 You've just, got copies of everything, right? I think yes, we do. Okay. So, so when I say I found this confusing, all I meant was trying to compare the two is confusing, because oh, right this is pretty... Yeah, that's we, pretty we basic. Have, we have, we, we sent have. out pretty basic, and this is Very a lot less yeah. basic. So. so we sent out to four or five different companies. Yeah. The only we ones sent out six. six. Was it six, six total? Six companies. Yeah. And the only ones that we got back any word from was the one pager and Nemric, who has we've got their software in hand right now that we use for um, our the MSL and, and the one software. pager we did not send it to right. a solicitor. They reached out to us. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, just doing the price comparison between the two, uh, Nemrick is pitching that uh, they're going to charge us $105,000, of which would be $43.75 a month starting J July of 2024 for yep. 24 months. Uh, the other gentleman, uh, the residential ended up being $89,800, non residential $35,000, so it'd be $124,800 for, for using him. Um, but talking to our district advisor, right now Nemeric is what the, the state of Vermont uses for their my my tax, all their software. Four years ago, they went to Vermont Pie, and they've been trying to get this up and running since. Well, this year we're working with both Nemeric and Vermont Pie to get all the like the homestead taxes in and everything for property taxes. Um, if uh, going forward next year, there will be no Nemrec. It's going to be Vermont Pie only, according if everything goes as they wish it would. They've told us that before. But, yeah. That's what they're hoping for, but that hasn't <laughs> happened yet. But um, if we use Nemrec for the town wide reappraisal, we're already using their software for Microsoft, which stops the Vermont Pie. Uh, what I think we should do is also continue using Nemrec. And what I would do, if they're going to do the time re the reappraisal for us, is I'll ask them how much they're going to charge us beginning of next year for Nemrick, which our DA doesn't think it would be much because we're using them for the town-wide reappraisal. So it would kind of be a win-win. Because we're still going to need something to talk to CAMA to talk to the state's new system. And the thing is, right now, um, CAMA, CAMA Microsoft is Nemrick. But there's right. like Patriot, Vision, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there that... And that's probably what the listeners were talking about three, four years ago, yeah. when they thought this was going to be up and running in like in one year. 
So uh, what I would like to do is if it's approved for Nemeth to do our townwide, is that first get us in the list because our CLA being so low, that's going to protect us so the state's going to stay off our back because they know that we've already got it in there for our townwide reappraisal. And the plan would be the reappraisal would start a year from now. Well, they're saying it might be 2026. That's how backed up everybody is. Yeah. 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 And that's what they said in their, and that's yeah, what I'd like to get back to them. Yeah, I saw that. Is, they're proposing that um, the, we start paying July 2020, 20, 2024, and um, they're going to start field review then, um, and then it'll be till May of 2026. And then June of 2026 is when they'll give us the final right. Right. So it's going to be a while out there anyway. And most other places, it's 2027. Is that what they're, is, I mean, 2027 is what they're saying it's going to be um, just to get somebody. Yep. And, and I've sent the RFP out that we didn't even get replies back. I, said, I think they're just well, everybody's, everybody's booked. Yeah. 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 Dorinda, how much money do we have in our fund? Do you know? Uh, for reappraisal? Yeah. Nothing that I know of. Do we? Or is that that special fund? It's a special fund. That's the special fund. And I think does yeah. the state contribute to it? I'm um, sorry? I think the state contributes to it. Yes. Wait a minute. Let me, I'm just curious. Actually, I just got something, I think, on that. Let me see if I can get into it. Okay. Also, while we're, we are, we pay a flat rate to Nemric, which covers all of our software package, whether it's Lister, you know, accounting, you know, dog licenses, anything. And that's only like $5,000 a year right yeah. now that we're paying. Um, let me see what I have in that. Because I had in my head that we had almost 100000 We but might, I yeah. Let me, something just. Yeah, we don't have anything in the budget. Uh, it's, so. not, it's like a separate account. Or something. It's a separate account. It's not in the budget. Right. Um, I can look. That's all right. No, if, I'll if you, look. Something just barely came through. For if you could just send us a quick email or whatever and just let us know how much is in there. My memory was that we thought we were going to be okay, and it sounds like we are. Yeah. If we go with the network, yeah. yeah. Um, and it sounds like they'll spread it out where it's not going to be one lump sum, too. So, I mean, we could also, if we yeah. get more money, we could pitch that next year for maybe. Now, do they, once we. Victor, you had a question? Go ahead, I can wait till you're done. No, I was just going to say, so once we sign this contract, the price is fixed, right? They can't change it? Well, it, except, except uh, if, if it goes over the uh, 900. Oh, if there are more parcels, they, yes, yes. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, they can't change the base price. No, no, it's, if it's more parcels, then it's $100 per parcel. Yeah, I saw that. And, yeah. And we sent the RFP out. We had said June 1st, we needed it by noon. So, I mean, tentative, I could let them know, but we've got to give everybody else that we sent it to, we said June 1st. Okay. So, so we, shouldn't, we shouldn't decide this tonight. We should wait. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Right. I missed that because I had to answer a phone call. What's the, you're saying that you're not going to vote on it tonight? The RFP is open until June 1st. June 1st. Oh, yeah. The RFP is open until June 1st. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, we okay. should decide. We can decide the first meeting and... And also, yeah. uh, when, when you sign a contract, is that fixed? I didn't hear the answer to that. It's yes, right. except except for if the parcel count changes. Okay, yes. Right. Yeah. Yep. Victor. Okay. Yeah, I got a couple. Um, pardon my ignorance, but um, I thought listening to the news, and I thought the state was going to do the reappraisals. That's that's up on the board, but um, talking to the state, it sounds like what they're going to do is have their hand in it, where you can only use appraisers they approve of. That's the H140 or whatever the one yeah. that's in front of there right now. Yeah. I, th I think I misunderstood that, too, because I thought they were taking over all the... Yeah. It's going to cost a lot more than what it's going to cost us with Nemeric. When I was looking at what they were going to say it would cost each town, but I think my understanding is that they will have an approved list of appraisers. So I thought the whole idea of that was to get everything statewide uniform on what how you were assessed. Yeah, and that's still, that's that's right now, it's kind of rocky. That keeps going up in front of the, the legislative and it's, and it has not passed. Okay, yeah. and then and the other, so. okay. And then the, the other question is, so you're saying this might not come through until 2026? 20, that's what it looks like. That's how backed up they are. 
Okay. And when they replied, they said when, they could get to us. When, by so they'll have possibly our reappraisal done by 2026? Yes. yes. Is that like December of 2026? No, June 1st. June 1st. So that would affect our taxes? For 2027. April 1st is the cutoff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So well, I feel a lot better. You know, I talked to Art Wolf, and he says it's, there's really no problem with, like, these houses that are s selling for one and a half times what they're listed for. Yeah, he convinced us all this. There's no problem. You're not paying any more. Those houses automatically get, once it sells, doesn't something happen? Yeah. No. Nope. No. Oh. Not until the real Not until the total real appraisal. No. There's no random, like... Um, no. Nope. Is that our town or is that every town? Every town. I think that's yeah. the law. It's called chase and taxes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just talking about that today in training. Yeah. yeah. What, he, what he said is if two people have houses that are exactly the same or $100,000 and then one guy sells it for $150,000, that they are still only paying on a $100,000 house. Until it gets reappraised. Until it gets reappraised, right. I'm, and then the other house gets reappraised too. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but this is probably putting the cart before the horse. But in the event that we may be undergoing renovations at this time, if everything goes as planned for the town hall, is it crucial that they have office space? Like, is that a big deal for them to have office space? Uh, you mean the Nimark people? Yeah. Yes, they want to use our office. It right. says it in the mm -hmm. contract. And I'm just, you know, all I'm saying is that if we're do undergoing a renovation and people are working with diff different spaces, we're gonna have to yeah. plan there on may, that. we just might have to plan on fitting they, Nimark they in. our office. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to have a listed office somewhere anyway. I know. That's what I'm but asking. We just got to make sure it's yeah, large enough that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make okay. sure you don't have a phone booth out in the snowbank. <laughs> Just something to remember, because this normally this isn't happening, but it could happen. Right. It could overlap. So my, I guess my takeaway from this, and we can we can discuss it again in June, is right. Nemrick looks like what we want to do for all the reasons we've discussed. Yeah. Nemrick is certainly the devil we know, not the devil we don't know. So to some extent, they're going to have to make us happy one way or the other. Yes, Sarah. Who is Art Wolf? State economist. State economist. Um, so we will take, does anybody have any questions about any of that? I have one question yes, and one comment. Um, so if we sign the contract sooner, do we get in line any sooner or it doesn't have any impact? No, it doesn't have any impact. No impact. It's already, okay. the date's already fixed. Already fixed, okay. And we only have 52,000 in the account. We've gotten whatever this year's contribution is to that. Mm -hmm. That's to date as of okay. uh, April. But I mean, we get it once a year, right? Uh, well, I think it, we get it according to, um, isn't it, it, we earn so much on every recording fee, Sarah? No, that doesn't have anything to do with that. That doesn't have anything to do with it? That, that, doesn't doesn't right do with that? that has, no. list, ask the listers, maybe they know. That's, that's Do you know how that money goes? I honestly don't know, but I mean, this is through April. I would assume we've gotten our appropriations. Yeah. But it sounds like we're going to have two more years. Right. Yeah. How big of an allotment do we get every year? Do we have a sense of what the? I'm gonna. I'll. I'll research this for the next meeting and find out when right, we've been be getting the just, money just and so how we much get we've some been kind getting. Of sense of what we're. Yeah, because I honestly don't know. Right. I haven't been part of a reappraisal before, right. so I don't know okay. how this all works. Okay, but I think my memory is once a year we get a we get money, but I could be wrong about that. And that money comes from the state. Yes, and it has to go into that fund. We can't use it for anything else. So, um. so with that, unless anybody else has anything, we'll move on for tonight. Next is the uh, fire department. Jeff's on his way. I'm sorry? Jeff is on his way. Okay. So we'll pass over that for a moment and get back to them. So highway. Yes. Uh, 
Nothing major to report on. We had an issue with the chloride truck last week. It broke down. Um, I think I've got that fixed. Um, there was a fuel pickup tube in the tank that was the problem. It had holes in it. Um, we're pretty much, for the most part, caught up on chlor uh, grading. I think we will be by the end of the week. Uh, waiting on an air valve for the International. That started leaking today. I got one coming. It'll be tomorrow morning. We'll change that out. And uh, I think that's about... Oh, yeah. We changed the bushings on the greater blade where it rides because they were they're made out of uh, brass and they were worn out. So changed those yesterday. So we're good to go on that. I'm not sure if there's anything else. The rocks. You got two things on your agenda. The rocks. Oh, yes. Okay. Jan and the North. North Fair Swamp. Yeah, those are moved. The, the bowlers have been removed? Yes. From, okay, thank you. What are they the have. concerns? I had a. Well, we block off the road in the wintertime. Yeah. I know, but what's. Did someone say yes. they had a concern? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I got a call and an email from someone saying that they were upset that the boulders were still there. Aww. But now they've been removed. Yep. They're not supposed to be walking on those trails anyway yet. On Hunger Mountain? <laughs> Any of the trails. I don't know what they're still wet. the dates are. Anyway, I don't think they're dates. The other end is gone too. So both, so that. So I have not checked the south. I didn't check south, the, it's all the open. There was never a rock on the other end. No, I don't think. No, there are barricades. There was a barricade. Really? I don't remember that. The blocks. I don't remember seeing one. I'll go double check it, but I don't remember I've been seeing one. I'm biking it. I don't see any blocks. Okay. Any news on everybody's favorite subject, the chipper? So I, I'm i working on uh, numbers for the engine right now. I think we have a solution that's not going to cost nearly as much, but I don't have the numbers back yet. So. Okay. That's for what are used? Well, yeah, I, I've got a free used one, but it needs to be rebuilt. Yeah. But it's better shape than what was on the chipper. So That block, was that block cracked? Yeah, I, I believe it had to have been because I couldn't find any other cracks anywhere else for the coolant to get into yeah. the oil. So this one, it was not cracked, but it, it needs some attention. attention. But it was yeah. free. So. I like that. <laughs> the parts and the labor aren't free. But no, but it'd be considerably less. Yeah. That's good. Is that, that rebuild something you have somebody to, oh, we'll do it. to do your do? I'll have to have uh, the machine shop do work on the block, but we can put it together. Sarah? Don't forget about the certificate of compliance for the road and bridge standards. That's also what Yeah. I don't You're all set? Yes. Yeah. I think I had to sign a couple Yeah, three things. So we have a certificate of compliance for town road and bridge standards network inventory. We, the legislative body of the municipality of Middlesex, certify that we have reviewed and understand and comply with the town road and bridge standards slash public work specifications and standards passed and adopted by the select board, city council or village board of trustees, July 9th, 2019. Further, we certify our adopted standards do meet or do not meet the exceeded minimum requirements as of June 5th, included in the June 5th, 2019 state approved tenant. We further certify that we do or do not have an up-to-date highway network inventory, which identifies the location, size, deficiencies, condition of road, bridges, causeway, culverts, highway-related retaining walls on class one, two, and three town highways, and an estimated cost of repair. So I guess the first question is, is the answer to both of those do or do not? Boys. We're not 100% in compliance right now. Especially in head walls. Especially what, Nick? So we say do not? Not. Do not, which part, what part, I'm sorry, I just can't hear you. What part is do not? Well, the first one is do or do not do our standards meet or exceed the state approved template? I presume they do. They do. Yes, they do. So that's a do. And then the second one is we further certify that we do or do not have an up-to-date highway network inventory. 
we certify we do it or not. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I, I do believe that we do have an updated inventory. Yeah. Okay. This is important for grants going Yes. Forward. We do. And yeah, we have an estimated grants. cost of repair for any deficiencies? Uh, no, I do not believe we do have an estimated cost. Okay. So that's, that's included in that second certification. Yeah, you haven't finished the sentence. Yeah. Well, I read it once. I mean, I could... No, I meant that you didn't finish the... The second time I didn't. I don't think you want to say no or you could jeopardize your chance so of getting say grants. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Say yes. I think we I think we say do. Yes. We, we keep our fingers crossed. Don't want, yeah, I was just gonna say, cross your fingers. <laughs> just say yes. No Carter's little liver pills required. Mm -hmm. So is there a motion to approve the certificate of compliance? I move that we approve the certificate of compliance. Thank you, Victor. Is there a second? Twenty twenty three. Come on, Bridget. I just I'll only speak if I have a strong feeling. Okay. <laughs> well, I, wait, I, I guess my, like, what is this for? This is this, for. This allows us to go for grants. Right. Okay, I but what is it. this section here that says, um, So are, are you on a yearly basis supposed to identify yes. location size, yes. deficiency, yes. conditions of road, bridges, culverts, and highly related retaining walls on class one, two, and three, an estimated cost of repair? Correct. And, and we have to, we're also agreeing to use the state of Vermont uh, statutes for road and bridge uh, maintenance. So that inventory has been done up to this point. Right. This coming year, we have to do a new inventory. Wow. But that inventory has been done to this point. But are, are you still in compliance? Yes, we are. Then I think that we're fine. Then we can say. I'll second it. Do. OK. That was, that's my only concern. I don't want to be like lying no, we are, signing something. No, we are in compliance. OK. So it has been moved and seconded that we approve. All in favor? Who seconded it? Bridget. 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 All in favor, I'm sorry. Oh. Aye. 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 Opposed? State of Vermont. Eric, can I ask you a few questions? Are you saying is it, these are done every five years? So yeah, I'll sign it. Just so yeah. to, I'd say they're signature okay. lines, so. Yes, correct. This also sounds like maybe it's something that belongs on the um, capital <laughs> spending plan about how much it estimates the cost of repair, although not really, because that's not infrastructure. This yeah, is right. more like no, roads. No, that stuff yeah. we've agreed doesn't belong there. Okay. I think Jeff just arrived. Okay. I couldn't read it. Okay, Peter, I can't read anything. Um, yes. I've received uh, inquiries from people on Bird Road about low-hanging branches. Yep. And I thought I could just get this in the minutes to say, what is the road crew's policy on low-hanging branches that have not fallen to the ground? Cut them if they're hitting vehicles. Cut them if they're hitting vehicles. Yep. So we'll go cut them. They should call the tree warden. I'm sorry? <laughs> they should call the tree warden. Yeah, you're probably right. There are a couple of hangers. I just cut one out of Porter Road this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Here comes Jeff. Perfect. There he goes. Wait, where'd he go? Did somebody close the door? <laughs> Come back. What? Lock <laughs> the <locked> door quick. <laughs> <laughs> Today. The door must have gotten a bit Nothing like budgets to make you faster, right? <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. We're glad to see you, and you're up. No waiting. What time? What time? <laughs> well, we're, a little, we're a little ahead of schedule for once. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't happen often. We're okay. glad to see you. Glad to be here. Um, so, you should have gotten this already. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Any questions before I get going over? 
Uh, we're about the same calls. Last month was seven, this month was six. We're up to 30. Um, our response, number of response, number of responses way up. Um, we only had one that was two, and the reason for that was it was canceled right after we got the call. The state police were going by the supposed scene and canceled us, so um, we, otherwise we probably would have had more on that. Um, the big thing is we had two mutual aid calls out, and we had one in that was for traffic control on Route 12 when that tree blew down, uh, took out a power line, and took a while for them to get get it all fixed. Um, nothing big on calls. Training, we did a simulated homeless campfire uh, down on Three Mile Bridge Road. We exercised both pumpers, tanker, um, attacked the fire, shuttling water, so it was a real good exercise, exercising all the vehicles and working together. Um, for work night, we washed off some bridges. Yes, we did. <laughs> that, that also, in addition to helping out the road department, it, it gets people to have hose in their hand and using the hose and directing where it goes and exercising the equipment again, which is good to do. We did have a, an air leak on engine six that had to be repaired, so we had to get them come to us. Uh, this engine six is not something to be lightly towed. And uh, we got that all fixed, and then a uh, oxygen sensor went bad on one of our gas meters. They last about two years, and then they die. And it, it, uh, I did a, the test on it last month, and it passed. And then they had, uh, somebody had turned it on just to check to see if it needed charging, and it had failed. So it goes that, that one day works. Better that, better that than ever seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, you can bypass the oxygen sensor to still use the carbon monoxide dete detector part of it. Um, so it's, it's still usable. It's just an annoying thing to get around and take some time. Um, no current purchases um, that we did last month. And uh, we got an estimate on the rescue, and I sent an email back to the guy on the price for 279 for a chassis mm. and a box. That seems a bit much for me. I'm hoping they made a typo. Wow. Uh, so we'll see see what, what gets back from them. We're obviously going to be checking out another company or a couple companies as well. Um, that just seems really high. Uh, we did have the, I'm sure you saw the Front Porch Forum uh, notices about the uh, joining the fire department, make me a firefighter thing. So we were open from nine to one, like the like the whole statewide thing wanted us to be. We had um, two two individuals and a family show up. The family was more to see the trucks, um, but planting the seed that maybe when they don't have such small children, uh, <laughs> they yeah. can get involved in the fire department. Um, one of the other people I think is going to be a real good asset for getting on, seeing how he's on the road department. Uh, so, and he lives in Middlesex, so two pluses. He works here and he lives here. Uh, the other person, we'll see what turns out. That's good though. Uh, good. Yeah, we had, we had some interest, so that was a good thing. Uh, the big news for the Fast Squad is we have a new EMT. Patty's passed her practical exam, so she's now a state licensed EMT. Excellent. So that ups well, the EMT too. force. Yep. Um, we had four total reports for the period. Um, which was down EMS-wise quite a bit. Uh, three of those were medical onlys, and then one was involved with an uh, accident. The, the one on the interstate that was canceled. Um, but that's about it. Nothing really exciting. Did you have any? No. We have a capital fire mutual aid meeting, meeting tomorrow. tomorrow. Night. Yep. Um, so right, there's nothing. I haven't seen anything exciting going on that other than they're going to adopt the bylaws things that you saw the draft over the radio operations. Uh, we did make an input to that to, I, I think it was just a forget thing about having um, fast squad numbering in the, in the mix of the various types of numbering uh, because there are some, we're not the only department that has fast squad only members so you need a, a number, an F number for them 
and uh, they just didn't put it in the scheme of the call number so it kind of confused Capital West a little bit and I happened to catch it because I was working on uh, our roster with them and stuff and well there aren't there aren't F numbers it's like what <laughs> we need to have F numbers yeah. so we, we straightened that out good any questions questions anyone yeah Victor what's the connection between the uh, the fire warden and the fire department anything uh, I mean because right now you're not supposed to burn right to get it what, what do they call that yeah there is a, a ban on burning right now right. It's a red, red flag dry. warning or whatever yeah. they call it yeah <clears throat> red flag you know what they call it yeah. yes yeah. yeah I was just wondering uh, he is not technically I don't believe he's technically on the no, he fire used to be. On he fire. used to be, yeah. yeah. But that's not a requirement. No. To to be the fire warden. No. Okay. Um, so easy. now we have him working because there's when there's uh, burn permits, especially in visible areas, he lets us know. Yeah. Good. So that we know that it's a permitted burn. One of the calls we got was on on Route Two, somebody driving by with a cell phone on the interstate. We should put cell phone jammers up. Um, I think there are three fires burning and calls it in, but they don't, do they stop or anything? They just keep on going. Um, and it was a permitted burn. So. Can I just ask a question? It's not an actual permit he gives, right? He just says yes. Because whenever I've called him, he just says yes, yes. it's okay. Correct. Yes. I don't get a permit. Yes. <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing I've learned is after three calls, if you don't get a return call, I just say, I'm planning to burn on Saturday if it's a problem. I've texted him he, and he'll respond to text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's pretty good. And then yeah, I no, he is pretty good. From him. Sarah? Um, a couple of things. Jeff, can you, I didn't get your uh, report, so if you don't mind sending that to me. Okay. I don't know why I was left off the list. Um, I sent yeah. it to the town clerk, so <laughs> I'll send it when I get back Thank from you. this one. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the fire of the uh, uh, Jason Merrill is licensed, is picked by the state. You guys pick them, and then we tell it's that under the state's purview, bizarrely enough. And I have just a general question from the fire department. Do you guys have any concerns about uh, lithium ion batteries and their explosion, explosions? I keep hearing these stories about fires in the yes. area. Yes, yes. And is there anything that we should be telling the public about that? I would not put a battery bank in my house. In fact, I opted not to because it's essentially, you can't put it out until lithium's done burning and with the Green Mountain Power thing, uh, both Green Mountain Power and Tesla said, we're not responsible if anything happens to your house. Um, I had an attorney look at that just to make sure I was reading it, what, he, what I thought it meant, and he said, yep, if that thing explodes and burns up, your, your insurance company's on the hook for it. You can't put them outside. Um, once they do torch off, they're pretty much a runaway system, and um, a leaf will take about 4,000 gallons of water to put out the car leaf. Um, so as you get bigger batteries, it takes significantly more water. And really what you're doing is protecting the pavement or concrete underneath from melting down. Uh, you really can't put out the lithium and there's no extinguisher substance to my knowledge to put out lithium uh, fires. You have lithium in like a lot of things, right? Like laptops and uh, power tools yep. and stuff like that. Should, should people be storing them in a certain way or they, making sure they don't get in touch with water? Or? They shouldn't constantly be charging. They shouldn't constantly Once, charge. once they're full up, unplug them. Right. right. And don't leave home. Like, don't plug your stuff in and like go home for the, go away for the okay. weekend. Like, right. those are things that like I'm very conscious about, yep. like with my lawnmower battery and stuff like that. We don't just charge it and leave. Right. And like those, and I think when you, the sort of the cheaper items you get, like the scooters from China, yeah. like that, that those are the ones that are burning apartments down right. because right. people are plugging them in and they're starting on fire yeah. or they're just not around. That happened literally at my son's apartment. Like there was a fire next door from a scooter. Wow. Okay, great. Thanks. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I'm not the chair, but you can. Yes, um, I actually installed Tesla power walls and uh, and phase battery backup systems for a while, and we actually had to go through special safety training on how to explain to people that we were installing bombs in their homes and to not put a blanket over them because it's not just 
that they overcharge. It's that if they, if you suffocate them with boxed items, if you cover them with blankets because you don't like the sound of the cooling fan, there's all kinds of other hazards that can cause them to overheat, and over overheating can cause them to actually explode. That's why they're built inside of steel casings to try to reduce the damage when they do. Well, I can tell you, insurance companies are trying to figure out what to do. Okay. They know they can't. Do you have to tell them? They'll never. Just let me finish. Yep. Okay. I don't think the Department of Bank and Insurance would allow them to exclude coverage for lithium-ion batteries or power walls, but I can tell you, they're thinking about a surcharge in the right because they know they consider it to be a serious risk. So anyway, good question. Um, yes, the, Bridget. Um, the energy fair, when is that happening, Liz? Has it Saturday. Happened? It's this Saturday. Yeah. So maybe there's materials at the energy fair to... Mm, that's a good idea. And then um, just because I currently have a lawnmower battery plugged in right now, and <laughs> I'm not <laughs> running for the door. <laughs> you, better, you better go home. <laughs> Maybe you should leave now. Let's talk about let's talk about the um, the general risk per the per se. Just aren't the isn't it? And maybe I'm wrong about this, but my understanding on things like lawnmowers and cars, when the battery's charged, the charger turns off. Yeah, it's a brand new still. I did it. It's more of these. Yeah, it's more of these scooters and and inexpensive things. I know my power tools. When you plug them in, they turn off when they charge when they're fully charged. So if it's something purchased rel relatively recently of a, of a name brand, I don't have to leave now, yeah. right? But I'll tell you, like when it's when my mower, because yeah. ours is like four years old now, our electric mower. Yeah, I just got sometimes it. I pull out the battery and it's hot? it's hot, you know, and it's never been hot when I'm charging it. Like it's not like I charge it and it's suddenly hot, but like. Um, you know, and that's like in the, in, in the summer, in the heat of summer when it's working really hard and stuff like that. So you just, you just have to be mindful of it, right? And I wouldn't leave them unplugged and go away for the night, right? Like, right. I, that just makes me nervous. Well, it, it's also because not, of these scooters. It's not good for the battery to leave it charging all the time. Um, they're supposed to shut off the charge. They're supposed sometimes to, but they it, don't. I'm gonna it, 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 lithium doesn't have a memory like, like, uh, nickel metal hydrate uh, does but it's still like the, the um, when we get radios and pagers from the uh, distributor the supplier up in Burlington they have a thing on battery basically battery etiquette of as soon as it's charged pull it out of the charger that's you're only supposed to leave it in there for the charging and that's it uh, so if, if you even if the, the charger is supposed to turn off, how many times do the electronics misbehave? Yeah. When the light turns green, pull it out. Thank you. They're trying to protect themselves as well. Well, it's good luck. Keeps us from having to buy as many batteries. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else for the fire department? Thank you very much. Sure thing. Good timing. And moving right along, continued review and updating of the town personnel policy. And Sarah was nice enough to incorporate our changes. We were on what? Section 11. Section 11. There it is. There. Tobacco use. <laughs> Okay. Tobacco use. That looks fine to me. Anybody think there's anything we need to change there? Section 12. Performance evaluations. Is that not something we want to institute as like a part of 
an employee's um, experience with the town of Middlesex having annual reviews? I know it, does, it sounds like more work, and it is more work, and I don't like doing annual reviews. Me either. But I also know that it's important to have them if you need it for like, you know, there's a reason why you need to terminate an employee. If you've never done a review and you're not addressing issues and, and documenting them, it can become problematic. I think what we do do, and correct me if I'm wrong, but where we have had problems, we document the problems. But I think our reviews have been inconsistent. Is that a fair word? I would say. I guess it's, yeah. I mean, I guess without having reviews, you can't go back and say, you know, you were doing well, you know, over these last few years and then, or the employee can't go back and say, you know, I've done X, Y, and Z over this time period. My performance evaluation shows this. If all we're showing is, you know, sort of the negative stuff that comes up. Again, I'm not, I know what it's like to do, I, I, they, I despise doing employee evaluations, but it is some, something that does have some value to it. Is there paperwork that you follow so it's standardized, so that it's a... Uh... Yeah, like we have an evaluation form, right? Yeah. So you check off the boxes. To my knowledge, we do not have one. Yeah, I mean, they, right. they're cookie cutter. You can create them and then you just have a record. And bing, of, bang, boom. Yes, and then you're done. And then I, They don't have to be, it's not like they're gonna be setting goals, right? My goal is to, you know, plow 20 roads this year. That's not <laughs> gonna be it, but. And then um, net follow up question: If they, uh, if it's wrapped in the um, the positive feedback Oreo, so it's good stuff, negative stuff, good stuff again. Maybe that we structure the, the we, that we we structure the uh, standardized form in that format, so it gives people a good and a. Yeah, I mean, it's basically it allows you. Yeah, you can have it either way. You could just be like, what are the strengths of this? employee, um, what does this employee do well, and then where are areas of improvement that this employee could have. Yep. And that's where you could say, well, you know, um, you. this is an opportunity where you could say, you know, Joe, um, you seem to be rough with the clutch on this truck. So um, we'd really like to see you driving more slowly or, you know, whatever. I don't know, I've never seen one of those. We've never, I've never. You never in, in the state gave an employee review. Oh, I wouldn't have... say that. No, I've never seen it since I've been with. Oh, yeah, I don't think we have it. No, I don't think we're done. We don't have it, right. yeah. The only other thing I, I can see both is... sides of it. Yeah. Oh, I can see both sides of it, too. And I, I'll get to you in a minute, Bridget. Uh, if we're going to do this, we need to do it for all 10 employees. So not just Probably, the road yeah. Group. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to open up a can of worms. I'm just saying that. They, they do have some use. And the only other comment I would make is, having done a lot of employee reviews over the years, hundreds of them, and for, I have found them useful for newer employees, worthless for older employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you, what do you, when you've had somebody working for you for 25 years and you say the same thing every year, what's the value? So it's, it, to me, it's a challenge. I know I've been to all kinds of HR seminars and they always say, oh my God, if you don't do employee reviews, you're leaving yourself wide open for you know, all, kinds of, all kinds of problems. Well, in 44 years, I never had a serious problem due to not having an employee review. And in recent years, we did employee reviews. Yes. So couple different facets to this conversation for me. One, the existing policy, which is what we're talking about here today, allows for those performance evaluations to be done. They're, they're not required, but right. they can be done. Um, from a, uh, I guess I pose the question, if we're going to institute required performance evaluations that mean anything, are we prepared to separate and look at um, compensation and tied to these evaluations because if we're not providing employees with evaluations that are simply just to check a box 
it doesn't mean anything to them. And we can always write, if it's a matter of trying to track the performance or the negative performance of an employee so that you know, we can say, hey, we've warned you, we've warned you, we've warned you. Again, this allows for that. Um, I just think my personal feelings on evaluations is one, as a manager, if, if somebody's doing well um, and you need to put it on paper, eventually I feel like it's, uh, from an employee standpoint, they're looking at you like, what the hell are you doing this for? If you're not, if you're not providing me anything. If somebody else is, is getting any kind of the same compensation change as I am through a COLA or anything else and nothing's tied to performance, what good is it? Right, and I will tell you, I tried over the years all kinds of, listening to that argument, all kinds of paper performance type things like where we would have a range of raises and you'd either get the highest raise or the lowest raise in the middle. And boy, that is really a can of worms. And if anybody thinks that everybody doesn't find out what everybody else got. Think again. <laughs> think again, they do. And it causes more resentment than positive. I can tell you that. And I finally gave up about 10 years ago. I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, we may have, we may have differential raises, but you know, we're not going to have a formal process where we check off boxes and say, because you did, you met this objective and that objective and this other objective, you get an X percent raise, whereas somebody who only met two out of three gets a lower raise. It's just, it's an un, if, I guess if you have a full-time personnel department and that's their job and they do that, maybe you can make it work. But when you're trying to do everything else you're trying to do every day, for years, I did over 40 reviews every year. And I'll tell you, by the time you get to the 35th review, you don't care anymore. Well, I spent weeks meeting with employees. Yeah. So, you know, my, my take on this is that's a bigger issue beyond the personnel policy. The pos personnel policy says we can do it. Historically, we haven't done it. If we're going to rethink this, Liz, we need to rethink it. And I think that's part of a more complicated conversation. But. You know, it's a question of who does it, how do you do it, like does, does Eric do the road crew and the select board does the, the office, I, I don't know, you know, and is it, is it consistent between the two? And I agree with 100% with your comment, Randy, that if you just, if everybody gets the same raise anyway, um, it's kind of meaningless. And if the only time somebody doesn't get a raise is when they, are a substandard employee, they're going to hear about that and have a warning anyway. Right. And this allows... We don't need performance evaluations. Yeah, this allows for the supervisor to do them if they feel like they're necessary. So right. I, think, I think the existing policy, where, where I was going with that, is I think the existing policy is fine. It allows us the flexibility. And, yeah. and change to make it a requirement for me means that we need to take additional steps. Right. So. Sounds good. Okay. Question. Yes. Do you need job descriptions in order to possibly do a performance evaluation if there's no job description in place? It's a good idea. I thought we had job descriptions for. No. I do not believe so. No. Hmm. No. I haven't seen one. Didn't Didn't we put? I thought we had something together when, when we went through the hiring efforts. When you advertise, you put together what you were looking for, but we don't formally have any job okay. description uh, in place as part of our personnel. Right. That's a very good point. And I agree with, with Peter 100%. You've got a person that it's for new people. If you've got somebody around that's been around and been doing a, you know, has a and then all of a sudden you get somebody in there that doesn't, they have a personality thing, you don't like them, you can get a lot of money for that. What do you mean? What's that? What do you mean? Wow. If you, all of a sudden you come up and, and somebody gives you a real bad, uh, gives you a bad uh, uh, rating and you, you, you contest it, and there's no grounds for it. I mean, that's discrimination. Right. Yeah. And I can tell Personal you. Personal stuff is tricky. Works. 
Well, we don't have job descriptions now. I don't disagree that probably having job descriptions is a good idea. Um, I think we did, didn't we do a, a job description for our, uh, our support for Cheryl? Well, we put together what we were looking for, and that wasn't a job description. We were out looking for a full-time position that was in combining the assistant clerk and the bookkeeper position, but they really should be two separate things. So down yep. the road, if yep. one of the person isn't going to be no, you don't do a combined. No, you don't, wouldn't do a combined job. You should have you're do what you're doing too. Right. Yeah. So, and that's the same with anything other than. You know, there's no evaluations involved with um, any elected personnel. So Correct. you really are talking the road crew and currently just Cheryl um, and your assistant clerk. If yeah. But that would be it. Yeah, I mean, I everybody else is an elected person. I agree. I agree. Well, that's something we can, again, think about in the future. I don't think we want to put in here that we are going to institute. All right, let's go to number 13. Yeah, personnel records. I think that's fine. Unless anybody see something they don't like. Uh, use of town equipment or property for personal use is strictly prohibited. That's pretty clear and it's Correct, I would say. Use of town computer system. It's all a basis as far as I know. It does say that, that limited, brief, occasional personal use is allowed, which to think that that might not happen is unrealistic. So having it in there is important. Um, might be uncontrollable, Peter. Can be uncontrollable. If somebody, if somebody contacts you, this happened to me Yeah. last week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Guy was trying to hire me. I said, I don't think this is the place to do this. And no, I don't do what you're asking me. And the expectation of privacy thing is important to have that in there. The fact that we have the right to monitor any and all computer transactions is important. Seems pretty standard. It is standard, but I, but I think it hits all the bases. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we need to change anything unless anybody else does. Um, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I read the first page. I didn't read the second page. Bear with me. something about um, the emails themselves like I don't use town computer system but my email that is the town email um, oh except I'm not an employee correct so maybe that doesn't matter so you use you use your private email right I use both I don't know how to respond on the I, I get the emails forwarded to my regular email, and I think that yeah. I respond via my regular email. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but the point being that, yes, and it, but maybe that's not the place for this. This is about employees. No. Well, it's a personnel policy. Right. So are we personnel, even though we're elected? No, no, no. I think no. we probably are. No? no not. Is she not? Okay. You're not either? Are you talking to she? You. Sarah, Sarah is. As, as our assistant, she is. I am, a, I am 
I'm a personnel. When I assistant. step into my town clerk role, I'm not. That's Same right. ditto for Trin. For Trin yeah. Not. yeah, okay. Anybody have anything? I think it's okay. But I think she's an elected employee. What? But she gets benefits like an employee. She's a fifty-one percent select board assistant, and under that role, she's an employee. Under her clerk role, she's, she's an elected, elected official. An elected official. Not an employee. But if she were an elected official for just you didn't have a clerk role, are you saying we wouldn't give her benefits? No. If she only worked so the town clerk, she wouldn't give But any if they were hundred percent elected officials, she wouldn't get benefits. She has no. to work thirty two hours a week in order to get benefits. But because she does both positions, she No, I know, but I'm saying so other town clerks that work thirty two hours that are elected officials still get benefits. Right. They would get benefits. Right. So there's sort of, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I would assume that they get benefits. But they don't have to follow the rules of the employee manual. They just have to do their job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, essentially. They have to fulfill their, their duties. Yeah. But, but that's not in the employee policy that thing about getting benefits for 32 hours, is it? Well, some doesn't even apply to for 32 hours. Um, there's one that is 24 hours you have to pay into the retirement if they work more than 24 hours a week. But what I'm saying is that's documented in state law. What? No, that's the town policy that we consider a full-time employee eligible for benefits at 32 hours. So that's in a different document than this? Is that um, I think, I thought someplace it said where they were had to work, yeah, the very first page. Insurance. Mm -hmm. And a part-time employee is an employee who works fewer than 32 hours per week on a regular and continuing basis. And a, where is that term? Excuse me, where is that? Section 2, page 1. It oh, explains yeah. at go. the very beginning yeah. what they... Yeah, perfect. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I'm just really being the devil's advocate. The town clerk, in her role as the town clerk, could break some of these rules, like she could smoke in the building. Well, that's a town policy. She could drink. That's, no, you can't, you can't tell her Don't what her she can ideas. do in her job, but you can, if right. she was smoking in the building, you certainly, it's just like you have a policy, nobody can drink on the premises. Um, I mean, we did used to have people that smoked on the premises, but they didn't smoke within the building. Right. That's what I was thinking. That's a whole nother yeah, subject. It's just you can't even it's humorous to, to So I do, I do have a question, <laughs> and that is, we've had for a long time that $150. Are, we, are you guys going to the next section? No, we're insurance and retirement benefits. Oh, I thought I did use the number there. Yeah. That is the same. An eligible employee chooses not to take the health the insurance one. coverage. Oh. And has other coverage in force, the town will pay $150 per month. That's peanuts when you look at what the cost of health insurance is today. And it is certainly to our benefit to incentivize people to take other health insurance options if they have them, spouse or whatever. When I, when I looked at this and the notes that I had, it looked like, and Dorinda, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like the minimum contribution from the town uh, for any employee was $9,200. Right. The cost to the town. So I had highlighted and made some notes in my, in my copy on the computer that when we got to this section to talk about whether or not that buyout was adequate. Right. And it seemed, you know, what is that, $1,800 a year? Um, it seemed like we could, that's an area where we could do better. Um, and 
leaves opportunity for the town to save money if folks get insurance elsewhere. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because I have the same feeling. So maybe we need to add language that says something like currently the town pays 150. Well, I guess this says can change from any of these things can change from time to time anyway. Town reserves the right to change insurance carriers. They had to lead amend insurance benefit programs at its sole discretion. So that gives us the discretion to change that if we need to right. or want to. But I think it jumped out at me just because I don't think that's enough. I know it's an area that at my place of employment, it's a topic that I bring up because I don't, you know, I feel like a lot of places when there's significant financial gain for the employee or for the employer, or in this case, the town, obviously we want these folks to have insurance, but why are we, such a little buyout to me just feels inadequate. Right, well, for instance, the typical situation, and I was involved in this again for years and years and years, you have somebody working for you and the spouse happens to be a school teacher. And our employee can be on the school teacher's insurance, but they have to pay 50% of whatever the cost is. Sometimes 100%, but frequently it's 50%. Well, $150 is nowhere near 50%. So, you know, I had people, I had people over the years who would say, well, yeah, I can have insurance for my wife. In fact, we have a family plan through my wife, but I want this health insurance too. And that's really a waste of money mm -hmm. on all sides. So anyway, I'm suggesting at some point in time we increase that. And I think it should be dramatically increased, like maybe $500 or. That's a lot. But you don't want to be paying for their insurance someplace else. Well, no, so I no, think. But you gotta make it, you, you gotta make, I know that's a lot, but. If it's, if it's gonna cost $9,000 for them to be on the other insurance, I, I think, and I'm out of it now, I'm not involved in this anymore, so I don't know what's going on now. But what was going on before I retired was employers were paying less and less for dependents and making the employees pay more and more. And I think that's still going on from what I understand. So, for all the read, the rates are going up and up. They're going up, food cross is going up another 14%. That's a little more than the cost of living. So oh, anyway. Okay. okay, everybody's favorite subject. Footwear. Sa safety approved footwear. <laughs> Highway department employees only. Okay. So there's no change, just to be clear, there's no change on section 16, correct? Right. Okay. Not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. We agreed that 200 was fine, right? That was enough. Yes. And it can just be boots. It can't be like, I'll throw in a pair of socks. Right? Remember that? No, no socks. Just, just boots. One pair. Okay. So the, the subject which came up in, in meetings with the road crew is a number of them said they wanted to have uh, lighter boots that they could wear in the summertime. And I think what we concluded at that time was, you know, that really if they're wearing summertime boots and they get $200 a year, the heavy duty boots ought to last two years. So $200 is enough and if they manage it they can have they can have both kinds of boots but buy one one winter one yeah summer and rotate yep but that is an issue with the road crew i don't know if it's still and then can be certified as a lighter shoe that works my memory Safety. of that is and helping out your boys that there are steel toed summer boots which are lighter and a lot more summer comfortable sandals. in the summertime than the winter boots. They're more of kind of like a hiking boot style. Right. Where you can get lower ankle, you know, still meeting that specification. It's composite toe, I think they're called. 
Peter, can I ask a question? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, you guys are still cool with the ASTM F2413-18 certification. I remember the last time we did this, that was an issue. Right. That's still the standard? I'm looking at that right now. It looks to be, Sarah, yeah. um, at first glance here. It looks like it still is. Okay, okay. Just checking. Good. Dress code, highway department employees only. Eleven shirts and eleven pants. 11 shirts and 11 pants and two jackets still what we do mm -hmm. and is that the right amount seems to work during the summertime do they allow for like half orders pants and shorts because i know it allows for shorts and in here do they they don't supply shorts so it's just the pants and this is what we get year round okay we don't get long sleeve shirts it's just short sleeve shirts and pants. Okay. So what are they wearing uh, for shorts when allowed? Their own. So that would be what? Somebody was just working as a truck driver, right? Or yeah, equipment yeah operator, truck, driving truck driver or any yeah, other kind of task. Yeah, if you're ditching and the guy's in the truck all day long. Yeah. Yeah, equipment operation, truck operation, or administrative work. Uh, yes, that looks okay to me. You have anything on that, Eric? Does that look right to you? Yeah. Okay, safety equipment. Good with that. You see anything there, Eric? No. Looks good. Holiday leave. We don't have to give Juneteenth off, do we? Is that? That's a state. It's not on here. It's not I know, but is that was that new? It's not that new. Two years, maybe. That's not a requirement, is it? If it's a state holiday, that state workers. No, I think. Well, I mean, we're I not think state you guys workers. determine the holidays. Right. Okay. Or they're not state workers. Right. They're not state workers. Right. right. Okay. But that's not a federal holiday. It is federal. Holiday. It is a federal holiday. Yeah, it is. Okay. And so we just don't give it off. We don't have to give off a holiday, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's not on the list. No, we don't have to. Okay. Has there been any thought to... Uh, and that was replaced, sorry Eric, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that was, that replaced what, Battle of Bennington Day, correct? E there was a floater to, to replace Battle you mean, of at Bennington our agency? Day, isn't that what? Yeah, we still get Battle of Bennington Day. But it didn't, they, isn't they that what the it. state... Isn't that what the state did? They replaced Battle of Bennington Day with Juneteenth or gave them the option did. of? Or, yeah. yeah. But we ended up What we both. did years ago was we gave the day after Thanksgiving instead of Battle of Bennington. 
Bennington Day. Yeah, so with, with this, this Battle of Bennington, where I was going with that was Battle of Bennington Day wasn't on here. So I was just yeah. okay. as yeah. far as. So what are you saying? The state became a Florida holiday, I think, too, didn't it? Or something, they could use it or not use it. Something else. Hey, what did you say about the uh, Bennington Battle Day? Uh, state. Just that the, um, state did something. the state, when they established Juneteenth as a holiday or whatever, I think it was it was done as an in lieu of Battle of Bennington Day, or you had the choice of which day you would celebrate or something like that, huh? is what I was remembering. But uh, Bennington Battle Day, they get off. It's uh, Columbus Day then. Yeah, I, that's what I thought it was Columbus Day. That was the floater. And they don't give them Columbus Day off, but now they give them the day after Thanksgiving off. Yeah. I guess it really doesn't matter. Yeah, so Battle of Benning today is a, it's a state holiday. Yeah. Uh, I don't see stuff. Columbus Day on here. No Columbus Day. Okay. Yeah, they took that off a yeah. few years ago, I think. Quite a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, for the state, yeah. I don't think we're supposed to call Columbus Day anymore either. Indigenous. Indigenous, Indigenous people's day. Indigenous, yeah. Yeah. Indigenous people's day. Should we change that? Sarah? I don't know. It's a few years left. Like, I think we should change it. Since I think they've Probably changed the name should, of it yeah. to Indigenous People's Day. So we have an additional holiday in our package over and above the state. And that would be? Um, because of the day Indigenous after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right. We offer that to. We have after things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We offer it, they don't, it looks like. Oh, okay. Oh, no, they do. So they which do. one is it then? Wow. So they don't have Columbus Day. It's not listed as a floater or a permanent or a, or a, an approved holiday. Hmm. I don't think schools have it either. So that's the extra day. Okay. The other thing that is in here is important, and it does come up from time to time. The town has the right to consider previous relevant experience in determining vacation time for new employees. That was always a bugaboo, you know. You can't you can't hire an experienced person and kick them back to two weeks vacation. You'll never hire them. Yeah. Are you guys on vacation leave now? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Just kidding. Schedule sounds reasonable and competitive to me. Another you know, question that always comes up is, you know, so what's the benefit after uh, 10 years? You don't get any additional vacation. Yeah, I mean, I think ours, ours stops at some point too. Um, it's 15 years, I think, but. Um, You know, for me, part of the conversation that I think about when I think of this section, you know, thinking about the road crew, uh, the road crew only, um, is where I've heard the complaints around, you know, just being able to utilize vacation time and, and whatnot. Um, is there interest among this board of exploring additional opportunities to, you know, whether it's create some sort of um, buyout program or anything like that. This comes up quite frequently uh, throughout the year, and I just want to have this conversation now and not have to address it any other time during the year. So I don't want to just pass over this section. I want to bring up any of the, any yeah. of the subjects no, no, no. that come up throughout the year. So, um, you know, it seems. So my thing, you know, my thing on that one is people need to take vacation. It's important. Sure. And, you know, to have people who are not going to take their vacation 
because we'll agree to give them three quarters pay if they don't take their vacation or full pay. Um, that's a mistake in my view. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering about having a minimum, a minimum required take or use. Well, we do. And because we only allow them to carry over a maximum of 15 days. But they're, you know, in year 10, which we've got some long-term employees, correct? I mean, one that would fall into that, yeah. Um, and Sarah falls. And Sarah. Well, you know, I've done you yeah. earning twenty, earning twenty days, twenty days for the year. You know, that's four weeks of vacation. I can speak for our department at work. You know, we're production oriented, and, and a lot of times, um, you know, the the attempt to use vacation time and whatnot is a struggle for. For some, um, so, and I'm not I'm not advocating one way or the other. I just want to have the conversation. But it seems to me, and I do support, you know, people taking vacation time if they want to. Um, I can speak for myself that if I'm getting four or five weeks of vacation a year, I take a week's vacation, and then, you know, if I was held to two um, plus the holiday package that's given. I personally would, would opt at the beginning of every year so you could capture it within the budget, an open period where you select, you know, a buyout of leaving 10 days that need to be used with your carryover, but that in the year 10, that'd leave two weeks of potential or 10 days of potential buyout for that for that employee. So they couldn't get bought out of the whole thing. They'd be required to use two over and above their carry out. Um, so I could maybe support something like that, but I'd say employees should take a minimum of two weeks. So the, I do the, agree the with newer people saying. need to do that. Me personally, I, I like to have a little bit on the books so that if something happens, I know I'm covered. So right. To, to buy out two weeks of my three, I'm talking about so if you have a if you have the max carryover, mm -hmm. so okay. if the carryover um, was met and then you're this next year you're over and above that and you're at risk of losing that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have any problem using it. You know, some people just <laughs> use, some people just use it, and I you know yeah. that's what it's there for. They should be. Um, and again, maybe there's not a need to even have this discussion, but I want to bring it up now. Um, that, I like know. you're saying, like you're saying, the, a person at the end of the year has uh, ten days, so you would pay him for that ten days. No, that's not not necessarily exactly what I'm saying. So let's say, and, and so the carry out, the carry over is fifteen days, right? Right. So in year one of your employment, you earn ten days. Okay. Let's say you never take a vacation day. All right. Those ten days roll into that into that next year. Right. Year two, you don't take a vacation, so mm -hmm. you're now at twenty days. At the end of year one, you're at risk of losing five days. Right. If you're a person that if we set it up so that they had to take you know the minimum of of two weeks or whatever during mm -hmm. that time, then this becomes less of an issue. But if somebody's not taking it and then they they end up having overages where they lose it. I think it's a benefit to the employee to be able to come at budget time or in some sort of open enrollment so you can plan for the cost of it to say, okay, if I'm if I'm here 12 years, you know, I get four weeks of vacation. Right. I'll use the two. I've at my 15 days of carryover. The other two I'd like to be bought out of. You, the person that always jumps on the bandwagon of the guy is selling his time, wants to do this? Because the existing policy does not allow. That's why I, that's why I hammer on that so hard. And it's an ish, that's the reason that I bring it up now is because it's the time to make this change if people want to make it. I don't think so. And if there's no interest in, in exploring that option, I'm absolutely fine with that. Okay. But I just don't, what I don't enjoy is I don't, you know, after budget's done or after you know this review process goes up all of a sudden you know we're seeing constant you know uh effort or not even effort just you know you get timesheets that come through and and we're having to deal with it all year 
So if it's an issue that we want to change, I just want to change it now and not have to deal with it throughout the year. That's, that's where I'm going with this. So I believe in the last iteration of this policy, or one of the last ones, we allowed them to carry over the 15 days. Yeah, that's what this before is. That, before that, we had not done that. And I think that is, that is fair, and that's a reasonable request, and it allows, it allows the newer employees to build up time if they're trying to plan for you know, a longer period of time for some special family occasion. The other issue that comes up all the time and this is very typical in any kind of small organization is, you know, I want to take vacation in the wintertime. Well, no, you can't. Or you may not be able to. I mean, if you want to take a vacation day, that's one thing. But if you want to be gone for two weeks in the height of mud season, that is not okay. And, uh, you know, that to me is part of the road crew job. Right. You know, it's got to be reasonably managed by the by the by the supervisor. But right. or we need to plan and manage to make that a, an option. So whether it's and I've suggested this in the past, whether you have some, you know, part time employees or anything like that, or if somebody if somebody goes out, you know, if we've operated with th three people in the past, can we get by with three people? Is there a reason that somebody can't that's take a, that's, that's oh, a judgment can I take a week's a week's vacation? I don't think that it's completely off the table. I I think no, this doesn't say it's off the table. Yeah. I'm just saying it's but it's subject subject to approval by the foreman or the select board or and or the select board up, up through the ranks and anybody working for a small organization, I don't care whether it's a road crew or an insurance agency or a town, needs to realize that you got to have coverage and. You know, you're absolutely right. If you have a four-person road crew and one person's gone, is that a problem? Generally, no. Okay. If it's the storm of the century, it's a problem. If at the same time two people come down with a flu, so now you're down to a one-man road crew, then it's a real problem. So, you know, we deal with those things when they when they happen. And thank God they don't happen very often. I I personally am against the idea of buying out vacation. I don't know how I look. I have too. I think that I think. You know, you know, it's not, nothing personal. I just I think that people should use their vacation. The idea of vacation time, time off, is for you to get rested up, do do stuff that you know you you enjoy to do. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it a benefit. I think uh, if Plus somebody if budget. somebody doesn't want to take their time and 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 if they get to the max, you know, you lose it. And I'm fine with that. Yeah, I just don't want to continue to have conversations in the middle of all these, and that's why I was up. Are you talking about the day that, 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 that the guy took off and, and made his time go up to 47 hours, and then he said just no a couple more time? Of, yeah, just different different. Yeah, but he occurrence. wasn't buying it. He was doing you. He was doing it. It was doing you a favor by taking that, because he could never take it again. Not until next January. Huh? Not until next January. Right. I have a question. So he wasn't really selling his time. Uh, it's the same thing. It isn't. Uh, it no, is it not. Is and <laughs> I agree. It's absolutely the same thing. Yeah. You're paying him for not taking vacation. And that is not in the budget. Where if well, it was why done do you say he's not taking vacation? You're paying him. He took a day off. He's being transparent. But you're also paying overtime for you're or not or paying even overtime. straight time, even just straight yeah, time. Yeah, straight time. Even just straight time, you're still buying out that vacation time. So right. it's still it's still the same situation as I've got here. The only the the one piece that I've brought up is if, you know through that policy. And I, and just to be clear, I'm not necessarily advocating for this. I just want to have the conversation about it. Is that it would be done in an open enrollment period, so where you choose ahead of time, so it could be budgeted. budgeted. Right. Because it's not budgeted if you, yeah. Correct. But you're still paying it anyway. You're going to pay But it. you can pay budget it. Over and above. Uh, not really. No, no, yeah, more, not. more of a statement, but have you guys just Oops. considered going to accrued time? That would literally solve Our the problem all the way Vacation is accrued time. Accrued time is accrued. So then how is it, so then what's the difference then? Because like at my job, we have accrued time. I quit tomorrow. 
they have to pay me every hour I've accrued. That's in the, that's in the yeah, and we do. Sure. And we do. Oh, okay. yeah. But we don't pay for sick time. We don't pay for accrued sick time. We, don't we pay, pay for accrued for vacation time. time. Right. And we're, we, like at our agency, you can only carry over a certain amount. So you can't carry over like six months of vacation time that could get paid out. Um, I have a question, Eric, like especially with these 10 hour days that have started, like Memorial Day, um, this one here, July 4th, do they you do eight hour it. days? They only, no, they only pay eight hours. For they, what? they only pay eight hours for holiday. No, I know. So like when you're doing your 40 hours, do they work Monday? Do they do eight hour days? When, how do they do their... They would use two hours of... No, they um, use their own personal time, time. I usually work. Oh, really? That's yeah. so, And then they work three 10 hour days mm -hmm. and then take two personal time. Mm -hmm. If they choose, if, if they, they want choose. to. Otherwise, they submit they it. They only get paid for 38 hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. So I will say that one of the things that, um, in, in our department, you know, they work four 10 hour days and there are certain holidays that they elect to work to allow employees to bank some of that holiday time for those 10 hour days, those other 10 hour, uh, those other holidays that they only get paid eight hours for and the one that they worked essentially is pulled from a bank to make up for the two hours of additional time that they weren't. That's complicated. Yeah, it's, you know, it again, it's, it's yeah. and I'm fine with leaving this policy the way that it sits. If, if doesn't that's, hurt to discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I hate to bring this up, but this is the time to bring it up. What about the 10 hour days when people take two hours per the 10 hour days on use their vacation time? Do you want to put anything in the policy about that? Because that pops up every year and it's become a problem. Wait, what do you mean? So they only want to work eight hours, so they take two hours vacation each day. It has been in the past. I'm not sure now, but it's something that we always say. Well, we'll address that when we revisit the personnel policy. Here we are. Right. Yeah. So it happens. See, we're, we're giving them 10 hour days. Let them take vacation. I don't see how we can't. Well, the recommendation on that is, is, is to say vacation will be taken in minimum blocks of four hours. We don't want to, we don't want to be canning out vacation one hour or two hours at a time. I think that's crazy. Well, not only that, the other issue that I see is, is you know, we're telling the, the public that these guys are working 10 hour days and if really they're working eights and using their two, two hours here and there, you know, just go to an eight hour day to tell the public that they're working five eight hour days and take a day off. Right. right. I'm confused. Yeah. So last year, and it happened like almost all summer last year, people would work eight hours and they take two hours vacation every day. So it would be 32 hours and then eight hours vacation. But it was, and they still took Friday off. So they worked Right, so, hours. but through what Randy's trying to say, if that's the case, if you want Fridays off, just work your eight hours Monday through, your Monday through Thursday, and then take Friday off with your eight hours vacation. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if that's if that's, if that's the thing, they only they want to work. So you want to you want to only have them take four hour blocks of vacation time. That's what I that was me. Just two. I I mean, uh, you know, sick time is one thing. If you've got to go to a one hour doctor's appointment, okay, an hour of sick time or an hour and a half or two hours or whatever it is. But vacation time, that isn't the purpose of vacation time. However you want to. Yeah, I have a hard time telling people that they, I mean, I take an hour of vacation sometimes. I'll be like, oh, I'm cutting out early today. But how does that affect your 10 hour work day? If everybody is I don't, rem I don't remember anybody it's doing it every week, all, all week long. It I was before you came on. I can they, didn't, they never did that. I mean, it was, I mean, maybe once in a while, but. It wasn't all week. It was a pretty significant issue that came that was a lot last of summer, right? A lot of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. This we last summer? Huh? Or the summer before? Probably, Probably the summer, summer before. before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was so prior to I you was, being in this position. I was going to say, I didn't remember that happening. Yeah. But I, I will say that from the public, from the public's viewpoint, that's, you know, it's easier to say they're working five, eight hour days 
they were approved for a vacation day on a Friday, then to have the timesheets come through and say, when we're telling everybody that they're working 10 hour days, and then they're taking two hours every day. Um, yeah. Would it matter as long as there's coverage? Because I always say, and you start taking away some of their benefits, and then you lose the people, and then we don't have the help. I mean, I used to do the same as her. I mean, I, I worked an 80 hour work week, and I would try to get my vacation in, and then I'd get called back in, so I'd end up having to deduct from the vacation because I went back into work or work from home or whatever. So I, it just, I'm my concern, because I'm seeing it in Burlington with the public works, is that they're just losing people hand over fist, and you start taking away some of the benefits that makes it. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's the work here that we might lose people. Yeah, I don't think you're taking anything away. They still earn the benefit. It's just but how they use it. It's how they use it. It's, you know, it, and I, for a lack of a better way to say it, you know, you're playing a game to say we're, we're working for 10 hour days and that's the message that we're providing to the residents. And all of a sudden nothing's happening or whatever. And in this case, it wasn't, it's, it's like, it's not just two hours a day here and a day there. It was like literally days on end. It's two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours. And if that's the case and you don't want to work 10 hour days during the summertime, stay on a five day work week, take your Friday. Well, I, I don't, like I said, I don't remember seeing that last summer. So I don't remember that being an issue. Well, wasn't it mostly happening because we, the select board was allowing it? Nobody was saying nothing. I remember now when you're talking about it. Yeah, they, they, it was something that they decided they wanted to do. And nobody called them on it. Well, that's our fault. Yeah, Sarah. If I may make a comment, I'm not sure theoretically or technically, or as Shelley said, just on a good bond-to-bond -bond basis, you can tell people they can't take their vacation time. But you do have uh, the road foreman in an earlier section saying that somebody has to, like the road foreman has to sign off on something. So what if you include a line in this saying that um, something about vacation time must be done in coordination or with super or with approval or with understanding well, with the supervisor? And that way Eric can manage the road crew a little bit. What is that? I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. What do you think? Well, that, so just kind of what happens now. I mean, people don't just take a vacation day and leave without talking to me first. Yeah. And Bridget's back. I mean, Peter. Peter Bridget's answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the paragraph where you start, employees are strongly encouraged to take an annual vacation further um, at the discretion of the road foreman. Um, employees are also encouraged to take their vacation time in four-hour blocks. But that still gives Eric leeway to say it's not an issue this week. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I, I'm just not to our block. Or four hour block, excuse me. What would you rather? Just, don't just not include I mean, it all. Sometimes, if, even if I have to leave, I mean, I'd like to be able to use an hour of my time if I got to go for somewhere. Yeah, right. So, I agree. I, agree. You know, in I my think mind, this is very generous. In my mind, there's a difference, you know, personal need versus vacation. Um, personal leave is, is something more like what you're talking about, whereas vacation vacation leave is, you know, in most places is, is viewed as being approved prior to, uh, not necessarily the day of. The day of issue is kind of like a okay. personal, pers the personal time, that's why there's two different buckets. That's back to the holiday. If people want to get paid for 40 hours, they need to take two hours of something and if they don't have any personal time they have to use vacation mm -hmm. and that's what's happening they're filling their their uh, holiday with vacation time well more so than personal time filling holiday time with uh vacation time given the existing situation i believe fits the use um the hey, something came up at home, I need to go a couple hours early, that's a that's personal leave to me. You're dealing with personal, um, and we give three days of personal time, right? I yep. think that's what it is. Yep. So. All I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, I think, I think managing these issues is the responsibility of the road foreman. That's right. And, you know, if somebody says, 
you know, my family and I are going camping this weekend and we need to leave a little early. Is it going to be a problem if I leave two hours early on, on uh, Thursday so we can get an early start on a once in a while basis, depending on what the workload was and everybody else was there? I'd say it'd be fine doing it every week all summer long. Well, yeah, I mean, if, it's, if it hinders work, then there's an issue. Right. Employee evaluations, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do, could I just have an opportunity to make mention on the subject? Yes. Sure. Uh, you know, just, just looking at this as the four 10-hour days being a, a benefit that we use as, as a promotional uh, fact, uh, you know, when we look for, for new hires for the road crew, you know, I, I would feel that the majority of the town would feel it's a bit of a uh, abuse of a privilege of the four 10 hour days to uh you know be working eight and using two hours vacation time throughout the week um i have no problem using a couple hours because you've got a doctor's appointment you've got to grab the kids off the bus that's a legitimate thing but um it sounds like since eric's been there and there's been more supervision it's not an issue so i would say as long as that doesn't become an issue again probably not worth trying to find a solution if it's not happening but it's as a, as a perception basis guys working just eight hour days to use two hours of vacation and still utilizing a four-day work week is seems seems from a public view of more of, a, of an abuse of a privilege that that we use to uh you know to kind of coax folks in there that's correct yeah, but, yeah. i agree yeah so it wasn't happening so what about what about just including i think bridget was starting to go there uh, what about just including something um requiring you know supervisor approval right now there's nothing in here that requires approval um that i'm reading and at that point it's up to you to manage right but again they, they don't just take it without me saying they can they may they may not currently they have in the past, and right now there's nothing in the yeah. policy that prevents them from doing so. At least that would nip it in the bud. Right. And then... Yeah, I, I like that. And I, I think also having, a, having another phrase in there which says vacation time should be approved in advance, if possible, or something like that, so that you can plan on what's going on. Like, you know, I know I used to, I used to sit down and say, okay, July 4th's coming up, everybody... Everybody raise their hand who wants to take the week after July 4th and we'll figure out who can do it and who can't. And if you did it last year, you might not be able to do it this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if there's an issue, we, we look to you and we say, why aren't you managing this? You know, Absolutely. That's... <laughs> I'm the fall guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was broad. So Ultimate, ultimately, Eric, we're all the fall guys. Yeah. but. I, I do like that. I think that's a good so idea. Can, can we just get the reward or the wording for that? If have employees are strongly encouraged to take an annual vacation and vacations when possible should be planned in advance and with the supervisor's uh, approval. Approval? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Vacation, vacation needs to be taken with the supervisor's approval and when possible should be requested in advance. Yeah, the only other thing I said was the four-hour block, but that doesn't sound very popular, so I go with what Sarah said. No, I'd said. skip the four-hour yeah. block. Yeah. We're going to do that. Yeah. 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 Because then it'll leave flexibility for Eric to approve right. and plan as he sees fit. So employees are strongly encouraged to take an annual vacation with supervisor approval. Uh, vacations, when possible, should be planned in advance. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. Great. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that we cover sick leave and then. Leave it at that. Can, before you move on to sick leave, yep. can I just get a clarification on the last sentence uh, or the last two sentences about people given two weeks notice? In the past, the two weeks notice has been given and then people have been using that, using up their vacation time, sick time during yep. those last two weeks. Should there yep. be anything in there to that extent? Well, it's got to be with the approval of the supervisor. Okay. Yes. And if they don't use it, they get paid for it. Right. I just wanted a clarification. So as long as that with the supervisor, if he okays them in the last yeah. two weeks to take yeah. the time. 
Okay. So do you want us to add a sentence there, saying? No, I just. I don't think, I don't think we need to. I mean, the other thing, that you know, there's every. You can imagine every situation in the in the world. Right. But if we know somebody's about to retire on a certain date, you know, and we're out there actively hiring for that position, and maybe we've already hired the person. Who knows? That's one thing. If somebody says, you know, I want to, I'm going to quit as of uh, June first. And I want to take my two weeks vacation, depending on what the mud season and whatever it is, we can say yes or no. If you say no, then we're going to pay him for the two weeks at the end anyway. Well, quite honestly, if they're disgruntled and they're leaving, they're giving two weeks and they don't want to be here and they want to take their two it's weeks, the last anyway. two weeks, well, well, they're, get them out there of there. No, 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 I don't disagree yeah. with you. Right. All they're going to do is sit around and putz around and gripe for the last two weeks. Anyway, I think we're good. So can we quickly do sick leave and then call it a night? Can I, have a, I can ask a question about sick leave? Yes. I don't know what the rules are anymore, but with um, all the HIPAA record things, is there any way that towns, like, I don't know what happens at Capstone, but can you even find out if somebody's taking a sick leave? Isn't that like a violation now of people's personal stuff? No, we, we, we they have to declare on their time you don't, sheet. Yeah, you don't have to dig into like the issue. Okay. But no. just asking. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if they're if it's an extended leave or whatever, obviously they need doctor's notes yep. to be able to Correct. document what's going day. on, and that's okay. a human resource okay. issue. Okay, I didn't know but, this is like I didn't know it's a new yeah. yeah. Or if they gotta go home because mm -hmm. they're sick. Right. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah. I mean, six are, days, the six days a year still competitive? Legally, you're required five. I was going to say, my experience is five or six days. Yeah. What do we get, Randy? Um, Twelve. Yeah, we get a lot. God, you guys. Is that? I'm so jealous. <laughs> I never take it. No, so I don't. Yeah, I mean, I so much accrue. at the time where I don't even accrue anymore, but. Hmm. Yeah. There are people that take every bit of it. Yeah. Right. What, there are definitely yeah, people who take every bit. There's no. There's nothing in there that says that if they take like, we only got six days, but if they take, you know, three or four days, there's not. Uh, they need a doctor's note. Yeah. No. I think if you gave more than six, maybe. Sorry. More than six. But six is pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. I think it's okay. okay. The one thing I would like to bring up is what we talked about back when we talked about doing this review is having the road crew come to a meeting. I would really like to do that. I would prefer not to do what we did the last time, which is where I went down and sat down with the road crew and went through all these changes with them. <laughs> that was not a fun experience for me. We'd have to pay them overtime if they came back. No, we don't have to pay him over. Yes, you would. Time. If you ask them to come to the meeting, you're asking. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. suggesting we maybe we meet during the regular work day. We haven't <laughs> met at night. I don't know. We don't ask. We could do it on a, one of their 10 hour days. <laughs> well, so, I mean, the thing, the thing to do there would, would be um, ask them back early and leave a couple hours at the end of their day. And then you get out of the. If we're doing something after the normal working hours, then I agree with you. Yes, that's an overtime situation. But if yep. we ask them back to the shop, say, say it's come back to the shop at one if they're getting it done at three or whatever, and you got that two hour, or maybe it's an hour. I don't know what time you're looking maybe for, but I think if you do it right at the end of their work day, and you're not holding them after their work hours, I think it works fine. What's that's the difference Peter between paying them overtime to do that and paying them overtime to go to plow snow? There isn't any difference except that we would prefer to not pe pay people overtime and save it for the snow days. Right. Yeah, very good. Is there anything in here that um, COVID-related-ish? Oh, uh, for like if they're sick with COVID? If you've already taken three sick days and then you still have to, if you're required to stay at home after testing positive? I don't think we have that anymore. No, but like in case something were to happen, like... Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. what did we do during COVID? We had you let them go into a negative situation. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. They had to they had to earn it back out. All I'm saying, guys, just to finish up the other thing is, oh, I'm not saying I wouldn't go present this, but I think it's good for us as a group to do it and sit down with them. And that also gives them a chance to say anything they have to say to us. Well, so and I think we told them we would do that, and I want to make sure we do it. Yeah, I think this is definitely a better forum for that as, uh, as a group, presenting, letting them provide feedback as a group. What if we went to them? So it wasn't just Peter, and it wasn't like it would be. You want to go over there and stand around that smelly garage amongst those trucks and talk to them? Well, if you go fun. as a group, it's got to be a warm, you know, yes. warm yeah. meeting. Yeah, you know? correct. So it's just as easy to have them come here. Oh, so good idea. The other thing, the other thing I would recommend is that we give them in advance a copy of the changes with a with the changes highlighted. Not just show up and start saying, here are the changes. Say, here it is. The changes we made are highlighted in yellow. We want to meet with you and go over those changes. So they have a chance to look it over and think about it. And we don't spring it on them. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if we do it before we approve all these changes, we just say, we're looking for your feedback. This is what we've got. This is what we're recommending as the board. And we're looking at for change. How do you feel? What's your yeah. feedback? Um, it's not like you're going to them saying, hey, these are the changes we just approved. Deal with it. And I also want to throw in that this includes Cheryl, who is a full-time employee that mm -hmm. is, falls under this personnel policy. Absolutely. So it's not just the road crew. Right. No. Well, and Sarah, too. Sarah, too. Well, Sarah only has 51% that falls under that. It's the Mary Skinner 51% that falls <laughs> under those policies. <laughs> Anyways, are you guys done with me? Yeah. Yes. Are you done with us? Yeah, I gotta go. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, so we're through. Uh, we're through section uh, 22. And, yeah. And we were not looking at ad adding anything about uh, requesting I don't know, this is pretty any kind of return to work note or anything like that. Mm -hmm. okay. It's extended. Okay. 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 We're going to pick up on 23. Yep. We'll come back. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, Sarah, to save you a little time and to save me so I don't have six different editions of this personnel policy, I'm going to suggest we do the edits when we finish it for one more time. And okay. you can keep these again and pass them out again. Yeah. What I'll do is when you guys are done with this process and you're about to get to the road crew, I'm going to send them this. They can read it ahead of time. You can, you will get your copies and everybody will be on the same page. That's why I keep asking about the wording. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Just didn't want So we'll to give you these back at the end of the day? Just Put trash. your name on your homework. Just trash them. <laughs> yeah, just recycle them, please. But you're going to give us another copy. I'm going to give you a copy of the changes you made today. She doesn't want to do it. No, she does do it. Oh, all right. Um, Got it. Okay. She likes to make agenda. Where's the agenda? Where are we here? We're on this rules of procedure for Middlesex Select Board. Yep. Do you guys want to pass over that? Um, uh, I think there's a lot here. We've never done this before, have we? No. We've always said we use Robert's rules, yeah. but we didn't really use Robert's rules. And also BLC. Robert's rules, they don't really apply to small right. stuff working. I'm sorry, right. Bridget has a question, she's being great. Well, this is the second time this has been passed um, passed out, so maybe we are ready to just make quick changes. And Oh, and is this the second time? I don't remember the yes, we, she gave it to us a month ago, I believe. Yeah. I think she wants to get out of here. <laughs> okay, well. Why did you I, highlight I, things? Because those are the parts of the section, those are the sections that BLC so here's what here's what I would here's what I would suggest. I, I want to hear what Sarah said. Repeat that again. I'm sorry. The, the yellow sections are the sections that VLCT said you can make changes where you can make changes. Yeah, so the rest. This is their template. So okay. this is it's easier for you to just like those are where you guys can make decisions. So I see. What I'm suggesting is 
we quickly look at these yellow highlighted yeah. items? Yeah. Me too. And then we can everybody can look this up. I mean I, I read through this thing, I thought it was I thought it was fine. Me too. But there's I mean, a so for instance, it's been our practice down through all the years to require a second for motions. Yep. So let's so say I like the idea that. of a second. I would leave yeah. that one alone. Um there is no limit to the number of times a member of the body may speak to a question. A member may speak or make a motion only after being recognized by the chair. That probably should be only after being recognized by the chair. Okay, so in other words, when we're talking about something and I get tired of it and I say, okay, I'm ready to make a motion, I need to say, Peter. Well, what we're yeah, trying to do, I know one of the things Sarah's trying to do is force a meeting more fo be more formal and right. less informal as we conduct the meeting. So really asking accurate. Bridget's very good at raising her hand. People are very good about telling me if I'm looking this way and somebody's raising their hand over there. I think that's fine, unless you disagree. Okay. Yes, Bridget, I see your hand up. Thank you. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. No, um, <laughs> the... Um, just making the motion doesn't exclude further conversation, and I think sometimes right. it narrows it so we can get through it quicker. Yeah. Right. It doesn't exclude further conversation, right? Being motions to close or limit debate will or will not be entertained. We have never had a motion to limit debate. We have it. We have at town meetings, but never at a select board that I can remember in all the years. And I'm really not interested in limiting debate. Right. And if we if we run out of time, if we're over our agenda, we can always stop and take it up at the next meeting. I'm not interested in limiting debate. Okay. I don't okay, know so how everybody else feels. I agree. Any other, okay, there's any time to do them. Oh, I can't oh. we say majority, don't we? Yeah, I think two thirds majority. We don't. If, if somebody's missing a meeting, we don't want to not be able to go ahead. Yeah, we do the majority. Two thirds and majority are different, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so Unanimous slash two thirds. We do slash majority. majority. No, we do majority. Yep. Yeah. We don't have enough people. Yeah. You're only talking about these rules, by the way. Okay. Okay, and then changing the order of business, postponing or tabling actions may be made by two thirds majority. I would say. Okay, so we don't do that right now. Like today, you skipped over because Jeff wasn't here. So we're suggesting that you would say, I make a motion that we switch to the third item on the agenda. Right. And we have to approve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you look at, you, what do you guys want? Two thirds majority or what? I would say follow the majority. A majority, like yeah. Yeah, I, right. yeah, I agree. Okay, great. Okay. We can be efficient when we get home. I like this public participation one. That, that Peter would say, is there anyone from the public who would like, because we get people who are guests and they never speak and maybe they wanted to say something, but they're afraid. Yeah, I think that's a right? good one too. So if you just after every agenda say, is there anyone out here who would like to make a comment about this, right? I think that's a nice idea. Yep. Before any action is taken. Yeah. Um, yeah, before any action is and taken. And you want yeah. beginning of, end of, conclusion of discussion of, when do you want that? I, um, Sometimes the beginning or the end of conclusion of discussion of each agenda item. Yeah. yeah. I would I would say at the at, it can't be at the beginning because yeah. they haven't heard it yet. Right. So they they may have questions coming in, they may want to hear this, but there may be more questions after the, the discussion here. Yep. So it seems like it seems like at the end of the discussion. Conclusion yeah. of discussion. Not the conclusion of the agenda item, but the but what yes. is end of versus conclusion? I think what they mean is like end of the agenda item. Like when it's done, you guys are voted, right. then they can discuss. Oh, discussion. just the just conclusion yeah. Discussion is right. before you guys vote. Yeah. Yes. About, and of course, they can always ask questions in between if they raise their hand. So that was right. Better, right? But if they you know, have raised their hand, historically, what, still I, nice what I've tried to, to do, and it's a little more challenging with the Zoom, but you know, I try and rec recognize yeah. people if they raise their hand, whether they're select board members or not. Okay. So, but I think that's fine. Do we want to put a limit on the number of minutes? No. Okay. I, mean, I think that I think the chairman or vice chairman or whoever's running the meeting can the limit somebody if they talk for too long. Wait, but hold on. At the beginning, at the end, at the conclusion of each agenda item, but before any action is taken by the public body, there may be 
can just uh, how about as part of the discussion? I say as part of the discussion. Discussion as opposed to saying it has to be before, during, or after. Just as part before. What well, we've typically done as part of the discussion, yeah, I recognize. As part of the discussion, yeah. you'll recognize them. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. Part, as part of the discussion of each, of each agenda, agenda item. item. Yeah. yeah. Um, and should we say upon recognition of the chair? Yeah. Yeah. Upon recognition of the chair, but before, with it. Okay, great. Wait a minute, though, but we still want there may the be chair a... to recognize the public Correct. if they're too afraid to say something to the chair. Right, but that's, right. the, that's the first section. You're in the second section now, which is really just controlling, getting it from getting out of control. Oh, yep, yep, yep. So what does it say, the whole thing? As part of the, dis the, of the, dis as part of the discussion of each agenda item, upon recognition of the chair, but before any action is taken by the public body, then uh, what are the... Let me just work on that, okay? Okay. But I mean, our, our, I mean, my intent or what I think is the right thing to do and it's the way I've tried to conduct meetings forever is, is to recognize members of the public who are here if they raise their hand. Right. Now, maybe what we need to say at the beginning of the meeting for, for those on the Zoom or here, please, if you want to be recognized, raise your hand. I don't typically do that. I probably should. Yeah, or even just say after we've discussed something, like the roads, for example. That's really the main thing that people care about, right? So after we've had a conversation about the roads, you can say to the public, is there anyone who has any additional comments or questions? Because this, this I is I usually the point say that, but I think people think that I'm referring to the select board, not to everyone. Okay, but just, I would say to the members I think the more the we can encourage people to be involved, the better. Me too. So what if we say something like this, upon recognition of the chair, public comment may take place as part of the discussion of each agenda item. You can just put it done, but, and before, and be, but before any action is taken. Yeah. Um, and that way, you don't have that dependent clause and just make it a straight up sentence. Yep. And, and what I would um, suggest is, assuming we implement this when we implement it, is that you put a little sentence to remind me on the top of the agenda. Remember to remind. Okay. And then just kill off this last sentence by unanimous to the body may increase the time for open public comment. Because yeah. you're kill not it. setting any time, so just kill that, right? Kill it. Yep. Yeah, you'll basically take half the half of the first sentence and yep. all the second Got sentence it. out. Okay, great. Thanks. And that's it. Bing, bing, boom. Good work. Do you guys want to vote on Are we going to be able to order the constable to remove disorderly people? <laughs> That's we're going to appoint you as constable. We're going to appoint you as constable. I remember. I remember when we used to have a constable in uniform at all our town meetings. So do we want to put this to bed and put a motion to approve those changes? I'm ready to put it to bed. Great. Wasn't it, Peter? What? That was the guy that you took. Which we were way ahead of time. We took. He couldn't have a gun. Remember the constable we had that couldn't have a gun. That was after George Today Boardman. Today would be right. Here. That's after. That's after George Boardman shot that guy in Plainfield. Oh gosh. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Anyway. All right. We don't need to talk. We're not going to have a town gun or armory. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the amended rules of procedure? Does this need to include the, the move from uh, Robert's Rules of Orders to this new Rules of Procedure? And that we will, yeah. I would say, it, we're, we're adopting these Rules of Procedure effective okay. immediately, or something like that. Okay. I'll, make, I'll make the motion to adopt these Rules of Procedure with the um, changes that we just discussed. Is there a second? Thank you, Victor. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 You're saying aye? aye. Yep. Aye. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did see, by the way, in here, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pay attention to this, but you guys hold me up short. That if we if we don't make a unanimous decision, we're supposed to record the individual votes. Yes. Oh, really? We do now, don't, don't we? Don't we do that? No. She does that. Sarah says yeah, that. Yeah, Sarah's been... I do. When I, no. first, when I first got this job, there was a certain select board member that wouldn't allow me to do that. Oh, yeah. No. The vote. Yeah. No, the residents should know how we vote. Have you already done it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Let me go get them for you. Yeah, they need to Let me go get them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sidebar. <laughs> Treasurer support, Dorinda. Uh, I gave you oh, I'm sorry. I thought I'd look them over. But you go first. I'm so sorry. Please do. No, you got it. You got it. I just didn't know if it was still a to do. Go ahead. It is still a to do. I gave uh, you an, a status report. Um, Bottom line, we're like at 82% of the budget, or 83% of the budget. Um, so I think we're going to come in all right without any yeah. big surprises. So, and just looking at this quickly, the biggest, the biggest part of the savings is payroll. We're down a person for that period of time. There are a couple of other areas. Yeah. That are that are underspent, but uh, that was my conclusion. Is we're going to be safely within our budget, we may underspend it for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we never know. We never Sometimes know until everything comes in. in uh, yeah. In June or early July, but it looks pretty good to me. Thank you, Dorinda. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions about the budget report? Yes. That, are we still on a treasurer? Mm -hmm. Yes. That that email that you sent out tonight, this afternoon, I assume it was. Cheryl sent it, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so how do we know who's... So she was a little bit... Um, I don't know if you guys got it or not. It I didn't see it. It just went to our vendor Pete so you guys they don't create any bills so um, it went to the highway department is basically our um, cemetery commission and those types of people it went right. to um, the league is coming down on having all of this paperwork um, I feel it was stronger than it, what it really needed to be said um, and the league is just kind of being strong arming here as far as what they want. Um, some of it's not pertinent, like they asked for if somebody's insurance policy covers from June to uh, from July to June, and yet they do it on a calendar year, they were asking for two years worth of proof of insurance. Uh, and coverage, but if we only have an invoice that pertains to one part of the year, we don't need to produce that other part of insurance. So basically, we just got audited, and the league came back and wanted to have documentation for these one-time bills that we pay for, you know, otherwise they're going to put it on our workers' comp. They'll add it to our workers' comp. They'll add yep. it to our workers' comp. But they were being overly aggressive, but Cheryl just took it verbatim from what they said to her and sent out an email. For the most part, I think we have been covered from year to year. There was two invoices that they picked up. One was for a repair on, I think, the, tr the truck that Eric had serviced at a, one of the places like up in Jericho or someplace, some trucking place. Oh, up in Enosburg. Enosburg or someplace like that. And the other one was to Kingsbury. And those were the only two. And then they pulled out all the fire department. They questioned why we didn't pay them with, through payroll as opposed to 1099s. Well, up until January 1st, they were not employees. Correct. Right. So they did not, and so we just had to clarify all that, but she took the lead and sent out a notice to, like I said, the cemetery um, commission and the highway department just said, anybody needs to provide this information before they start work. Okay, so like with the person that moves their equipment, mm -hmm. is he all set? 
He, well, he has been in the past. I don't know if his information is current or not. Okay. That's what she should be looking at to find she, out, if, being Cheryl, right. should see if he's got, he always did give us a, a certificate of insurance right. every year. Right. So we would just need to make sure. So we shouldn't stop him when he comes over? No, if you've got something scheduled, go forward oh, to it. Okay. Because if we don't have to submit this paperwork again. We've got time to go okay. back. Okay. Somebody like that we've been doing business with for years. Okay. Um, it's these one-off places that right. are more or less creating the problem. We don't know we're doing business with them until the check, like when, until the bill shows up. Like when we do uh, sand hauling or, or gravel hauling, we those people are they okay? Are they? Are they well, they, it depends who it is. It's like we had a motor fixed from somebody in Worcester. We have no idea who that person is or something. That was a while back. I'm just using that as an example, or whatever. And it might not even have been the highway department, but we did something, and these individual names come through, and those are the people that we should have the documentation before. Okay. We just go out and have them do something, unless it's an emergency. If we have a truck broken down and we have to get it repaired, by all means, get it repaired and we'll deal with the consequences afterwards. Yeah. The other thing I would say is, uh, having been on the other side of this for a million years, is we, for people we insured, we had a list of certificates, so we would just automatically send out certificates every whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would ask people, part of our renewal process was to say, here's your certificate list. Is there anybody we should add or delete? And right. we would just routinely send them out. And yeah. that's, so and as you say, it's the oddball sure, ones. It's right. the oddball it's ones. It's the oddball the ones that are falling through the cracks. And we have to, you know, we've got a bill, we have to pay them, but yet we don't have any of their, you know, business information, their tax ID or their social security number or, or anything like that. But yes, they want their check. <laughs> yeah, so. we, can't, right. we can't release checks till we have those documents right. in the end. Right. So. Right. No, you don't want to be chasing them right. afterwards. There's nothing. There's nothing worse than going yeah. back at the end of the year when you get audited and you. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just making sure that these people, you know, send in their certificates every year. Yeah. And we've done business with most of them for a long time. <clears throat> Okay. Anything else, Dorinda? No, that's all I had. Okay, we have a letter from the Planning Commission requesting to appoint PC member Mitch Osecki as an alternate on the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Is there a motion? I move that we appoint Mitch Olecki to the uh, Alternate. Um, say what? He's the alternate. He would be the alternate. alternate. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Liz. All those in favor of appointing Mitch to be our alternate to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Mitch has got it. Um, <laughs> lucky <job> Mitch. Mitch. <laughs> Welch Park update. I actually do have a Welch Park uh, update. Uh, I've been talking to John Riley. I have a conference call set up with Matt Oates and Carl Balin for Thursday to go over the nuts and bolts of the different things we need to we need to parse out to do away with this. John has been working on the on the document, so there is some progress, but we're not there. Uh, we're not there yet. And uh, I was distressed to learn, and Dorinda pointed out to me that she told me this, and I thought she was wrong when she told me, but we ran across a little hitch in our come along to the extent that uh, the fire department is attached to the yep. fire pump. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're going to have to make some kind of deal about how that's going to work. I talked to Matt Oates about it. I said, what I'd like to do is say, we'll take over the road. You continue to support the fire pump. The alternative would be, which which Riley suggested, is we prorate the cost of maintaining the fire department according to the square footage, which means we would pay less than a tenth of whatever the whatever the cost is. But uh, it would seem to me that 
us maintaining that road. And guess what? It needs some paving now. Um, would be more than adequate, but we'll see. We're working on it. It's in the works. Okay, thank you. He skipped over the yes. He skipped over the uh, locals uh, catering permit. We need that. Considering approving a request to cater. I'm sorry, what? Considering approving a request to cater permit for the local. Oh the yeah, I did. I did miss it. I'm sorry. You have a tiny little agenda. This, I have a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a new one. <laughs> my eyes get my eyes get tired at the end of the day. Considering uh, where are we here? I'll move that. May I yeah. move? Yes. <laughs> I'll move that yes. we request that we approve the request to cater permit for the local. Do you have it, Sarah? That's no, everything is now uh, online. It's okay. just a message from the state. As soon as you're done, I'll press the button and they'll get the permit. Gotcha. Is there a second? Yep. Okay, thank you. Who's, who's yet? All in Is favor Randy, of Randy? Oh. Okay. All in favor of uh, approving the permit for the local, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I'm sorry, I was looking at my copy of the agenda, not the one you gave me that had that in it. So shame on me for that. Um, the orders are going around. Correspondence. Oh, we have this thing. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Listen, I'm just uh, in correspondence. Russ sent an email today with an attached template for a survey for this water district. Uh, he wanted to appear at tonight's meeting. It's good he didn't. I, I put, I'm putting him on the agenda for the sixth, but asked if he could send ahead of time what he would like to discuss. So you've got your e you've got the email. You don't have the email. I've, I've printed that out too. But there's the survey. If you guys could take a look over it, look it over before the June 6th meeting because he would like to discuss that. Can I just make a comment on it because I'm not going to be here for the June 6th meeting. Yeah. I'm hoping that all of these questions that are about your septic and about your water system will only be given to those who say I live in Middlesex Village <coughs> because this survey is for other people. It's for me and I certainly wouldn't somehow want people to think that Middlesex is going to supply a water system for me. So I'm hoping these are good questions, but they should only be um, directed when the person checks off the box that says, I either work in the village or I'm a resident of the village. But this survey is only going to those folks no. who will be impacted by this, I no. thought. No, yeah. it's not. What, what, what Russ would like the board to consider is defining the area to where you want to send this survey. Because we're not so going to send it, it will cause massive town-wide confusion. He wants the board, he wants two things from the board. Where, where is the district that you think? What do you, what, how do you envision this? Where does this go? Does it go down to Welch Park? Does it go down to the industrial section? Does it go here? Does it go there? I don't even know if it can go to the industrial section. So that's the first thing. And then once you define that area, then that survey will go to that area. Okay, because just right. one of the questions is, you answer, I'm a resident of the town. Yeah, he said- Or I own thing. property in the town. Yeah, or, you know, This so. is something he got from like more- General question, just, okay. yeah. So okay. it's the okay. village- Okay, that makes more sense. Yes. Yeah. Peter, I, I believe that it should be sent to everyone in the town, and here's why. As Russ's development increases and grows, it significantly impacts more people. So if he plans to develop that property as far as, say, he possibly can, then you're not talking just the downtown or village district anymore. You're talking significantly greater, larger area of population. The larger his community that he plans, that area that he plans on developing, the larger draw he will have to do and the farther he'll have to drill for that well, which means he is going to impact the water in the area from possibly farther distances. So this survey should go out to anybody that can be impacted if his property is expanded to the largest scale that it possibly can go to. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to go to him. It's well, he's saying like I mean, that, you so, know, well, so right, so people right now, are not I mean, sure well, well, like according, to, according to the engineers when he brought the engineers here from Otter Creek, yeah. right? It's 2,000 foot radius. That's their initial well that they have right now. Right. If they grow that property and it expands with more housing and stuff like that, that well draw will become larger Correct. as well as possibly drilling it deeper, which means that radius is going to continue to grow. 
right? So it should be whatever the largest possible well and draw that he could use, that should be sent to that radius because those are ultimately the people at the end of his expansion on his, on his residential project is going to impact. So it shouldn't just be limited now to the people it's going to affect right now because mm. in 10 years it's going to affect 30 times. That's a good people. point. So we need to we need to think of his neighbors when we're setting this out. I don't exactly. know what that distance is. I don't disagree. So I, I think it would cause absolute massive confusion if we sent this I out. I don't know where that radius town. is, but we should find that out before we send this out to know exactly who we need to send it to. We should go. Two thousand. Well, it's that's, 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 the, now, but it that's the initial. So I'm saying we need, to, we need to have him provide us with the numbers. Okay, if you develop your entire property to its max amount of housing and draw, what's the radius of potential impact for wells? And then we send it to that radius. Because ultimately, he's going to develop that as far as humanly possible once he gets the ball rolling, right? He's not going to stop at his first initial complex. It's just going to keep going, right? So we need to give everyone that can impact, even if it's 20 years from now, the opportunity to speak on it. Because if we allow it to go through now at the small scale, it's going to keep snowballing. Now it's affecting people that don't have a voice initially that will get affected later. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the question, the question I have is, I don't understand all these wastewater questions. So I don't this, either. Is there, this is all. This, this is only. This is only for your correspondence. There's not going to be any action tonight. The idea is you get it now. You can have a discussion about it now. But on June 6th, you should be prepared to ask the questions because this is kind of like your homework. Okay. Well, I'm I'm fine with the water questions, and I agree with the I agree with the radius issue. Yeah. I don't agree with asking all these wastewater questions. Well, I think the wastewater comes into play if if this is if this is going to be a. a if people it are potentially be has wastewater impact, if folks are getting off from individualized wells to a more centralized system, theoretically they could develop other opportunities for wastewater eventually as well. But I think for me, the circulation of this survey, I think is is one piece of the question. I think I agree with Steve that you know, the, the surrounding neighbors should be notified. I don't know if it's necessarily this survey, um, because this, in my mind, the survey and what I've read thus far is looking for feedback that's gonna impact uh, those that have the ability to actually attach onto this system. Exactly. I believe that there should be some other sort of one pager or something just that has, has informative information on it to the overall development plans to address your concerns. I just don't know as if the survey needs to go out to all of those people. I think something does. Yep, I would agree with that. Yes, sir. Peter, well, one of the other will. concerns I have is if, they're, if they do plan on at some point doing anything wastewater, that the town take that incredibly seriously as far as how hands-on it is because currently in the state of Vermont, I don't know if anybody else keeps up on the wastewater numbers around the state, but uh, every time it rains in this state, north of a million gallons of sewer gets dumped into our waterways. And, and literally, I think the last survey number was from uh, 2021, and we dumped five, over 5.7 million gallons of fecal matter and, and black water in, yeah. into our waterways. And so, where is they, where are they planning on putting this wastewater treatment plant? Because I know they'll have to have a water source from probably the river. And so, you know, what are what are the steps the town I, 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 is I, into stuff like that as well? I, I understand that, but what we're trying to do is determine if people are interested in having a public water system in the village. Correct. And so, I ask all these questions about. Well, we were just just to give you a little history when when we looked at this the last time, and that was what ten years ago, Sarah. I was way before that. Okay, maybe way before that. We determined that what we had in the village was a water problem, not a wastewater problem. The soils are in the in the village are good. I don't foresee, and, and you know maybe something has changed, and he could tell us that. But I don't foresee us putting in a municipal wastewater system. Really? And I don't really see they're going to have to have some kind of 
some kind of wastewater system up on up on their property. Good one. But I just think it's going to, I, I mean, it would freak me out if you asked me all these questions about my wastewater system. I'd say, you know, I thought we are talking about a water system. So I don't know. Those are good questions to ask him. Why is that if he says, here's the reason why you think you should do that, and we agree with it, we can do it. But on the face of it, to me, I don't think we want to be asking about wastewater. Bridget, that's a question, I think. Yeah. Well, it's just like with Steve's question. So these questions are being proposed by Russ, right? Or, or did we create this document? We asked them to create, give okay. us a draft survey. And then we would then ask him what the proposed area is that could be significant, could be um, in some way impacted based on current, pl current and future planning. And then, but who checks on his numbers, whatever he comes back with? And is that going to be the town? And is that going to cost money? I don't understand your question. So well, the engineer is sorry. going to tell us, the engineer, Russ is going to say, you know, here's what we perceive the maximum development of that property to be. Right. Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's his, he's right. going to tell us that. I just and the engineer is going to say, that. based on that, based on that, there's the potential that we would need additional water supply. And I don't know what that maximum distance is. Okay, it might stay 2,000, it might get bigger. Okay. But if it is going to, if there is some chance that that prohibition zone or whatever you call it is going to poach on the neighbor's property, I think we should tell right. them. And I just wanted to make sure that it, there was some policing of whatever number comes back. That's all. That well, it wasn't only, just his figure that we have some power to. Well, the engineer is going to, is going to tell us, but okay, it's going to be based on Russ's information. It can't be any other way. Okay. You know, he's going to say, we think we're going to have so many housing units and we're going to have a daycare center and we're going to have this and we're going to have that. And that's going to determine their need for water. Okay, Doc. The, I do, I did understand, and we've got to document it, that there appears to be plenty of water there, both for them and for us. So maybe the, maybe the existing well is adequate, but that's a good question. It's, a, it's adequate for what they're what they're planning to develop currently, but they won't be able to tell us future impact until they either a start drawing for future, b drill deeper and draw for future, and then they'll have to give us the option of monitoring surrounding wells, which they said that they are they are responsible for paying for that monitoring if a neighboring property wants it. But as far as like verifying what their engineer says, that would be on either a the town to decide they want to hire a third party engineer to That's verify right. what Otter Creek Engineering is saying, yeah. or B, an individual from the town privately funding a third party engineer to verify what Otter Creek is saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that it would be incredibly neglectful of the town to just trust what they're saying, especially after Otter Creek Engineering sat here, said we didn't qualify for any grant that could assist the town in that and I could literally turn around and point to four that we qualified for out of the gate. Yeah. So if they're going to lie about something like that, it would be neglectful of the town to believe that they wouldn't. But it should be easy to easy else. to check on what those what those rules are. I mean they've got to be state regulations. It can't be rocket science. But I all I'm saying is he's gonna tell us what the what the bill that is. We can't and how can how can he tell us absolutely that no matter what that's what it's going to be, and you know I mean it's got to be a little bit of a leap of faith here on some level. Trust but verify, dear. Trust but verify. No, I know, but I mean we're, it's not any number that he's going to give us that we can say you told us way back when when you were talking about this project that you would never exceed so many housing units. Love that. As long as it meets the zoning. Sarah has her hands up. Yep. Yeah. So in my conversation with Russ, the idea of this survey is just to find, for his purposes for applying for grants, uh, who, would, who in this area is interested, who, who in this area who would be receive water if you if created a municipal water system, right. if there's interest in That's all this is. This isn't doing anything else by this. You know, you're really, really, really early in the process. 
And I think the select board just needs to identify the area that would probably be served by this municipal water system if you did did it, and should be sent out a survey, and what questions should be asked. Yeah. That's my, just relaying my conversation with Russ. Again, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that's what's, that's the point. Yeah. Can I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I think that for the ease of, of distributing this survey, you could distribute it to everyone in town, because I think the first page actually will tell a lot. If 90% of the people say, I don't believe that Middlesex wants it, that tells us something. Yeah. And then the second page, when it asks a question, what is your relationship to Middlesex? I am a resident of the village. That sends you to the rest of the questions. I am a resident of the town. That says, thank yep. you for doing this survey. Yep. Or I work in Middlesex. Or maybe I own a business in Middlesex, as opposed to, right. you know, I work in Middlesex. So, and and that way, and if they if we get all the answers from anyone in town about their thoughts on a on a municipal water system, but we get more details from people who actually would benefit from the municipal water system. So here's the problem, or yes, the question. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> if I were to get this survey, yes, and I live up at 76 East yes. Hill Road, I would say. You mean to say the town is going to provide a water system for the village? Yes. What? And we would say yes. That's the. And that, that means is the, the town is going to pay for that. Yes, or, and then you're no. going to answer all these negative no, things. No, 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 no. I think what we need to be able to say when we send out the survey, it's anticipated that a water district will be created and that the users of the system will pay for the water system. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, but I, I, mean, just I think it costs it, millions of dollars, and they're not going to. Uh, Dave Smith isn't going to spend millions of dollars on a water system. I think that we would have to. The town would have to contribute something to it. I don't think it's free. I respectfully disagree with that, but yeah. As a resident, as a resident of the town of Middlesex, I would be incredibly pissed off if my taxes went up. Because I was supplying water for just the people off of Route 72. I think it's. I think it would cost something. It would, but it, but, it, but there's zero benefit to me as a resident. So yeah. why Steve, would I, I be paying? Steve, I agree with you. We're getting, we're we're putting the cart way before the horse here. Yeah, Bridget. Uh, my question went to. Um, does it have to be mailed? Is this something that can be available to online and we alert? Or what is the plan for the document? We haven't discussed we haven't, Okay. Yeah. And then to what Steve says, there is some benefit because we'll have an increase of people in downtown area. I mean, it's just not a, it's just not a financial benefit. Okay. So, so now well, then, okay, that's subject to your opinion, though whether or not you actually want development within the village. Well, no, it's, it's, not, it's not just about the development, though. It's, okay, so now you're bringing a water district into to the village. So you're bringing in more tourism possibility to the town, right? There's more or less what you're speaking about. I don't see a housing development going in on Route 2 anytime soon, not even in the next decade. No right? factory. So what is being benefited other than to the business owners on Route 2 where that water district would be? It certainly isn't anybody up on East Hill or bear or anywhere else in town right there's no benefit to anybody else it's just to the businesses right here on route two so there's and no the, argument for and the household yes. well i think the whole point of this exercise is that russ has claims he has a lot of water and this is an opportunity to explore this possibility that otherwise would not be able to be explored if he did not purchase that property and so I think that's where this is coming from. This does not mean that we're having a municipal water system. It's just we're a long way the from very, that. very early stages of even getting the feel from the town, like, hey, this is something you'd want. So what, for instance, happened the last time. And there may be many people who don't want it, right? Who have wells. They don't want to pay an extra $600 and a, that's what a they year. Said, and that's what they said the last right? time. Right? $800 a year, whatever it is. So anyway, I wouldn't get too excited about this yet, is what I'm saying. But I, I certainly, for me, I agree with you. I don't anticipate the town putting in a water system for the village in any way, manner, shape, or form. And I don't think Russ does either. Yes? Uh, well, I remember when he was here last time, the only thing that would concern me is he did say it would cost the town quite a, a bit of money also, even 
Yeah, that he wants to be great. working all of the expenses. It would, it would cost the town something too. Mm -hmm. I thought he. Am said I remember? Too. Didn't he yeah. say that? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's he's not going to tell us. He's not going to tell us how we're going to pay for this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's going to give us. He's potentially giving us an opportunity. It's up to us to figure out if a water district is the way to do it. If so, how many people are willing to hook up? Because we can't force them to hook up. So if we create this thing and they don't hook up, it's not going to work. So the, the other thing that that we can't forget about this is right now we have you know very limited fire protection in the village i mean this would provide hydrant water in the village which is a definitely a benefit to the, anybody who owns property in the village when all the teslas start on fire <laughs> yeah when all the lithium batteries go to hell and the town burns down i have to i just want to comment on the other matters before the board okay yeah. Is that time? Uh, yes, I'd say it's okay. time. So just um, as an FYI, if anyone's interested, um, Randy, I did send you the link just in case you wanted to come. I'm meeting on Thursday with uh, Sam Lash from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission um, and my husband, Lowry, who's on the um, Energy Committee, who's you know hopefully going to help us with navigating the... Um, the MERP grant and um, all the stuff that's coming down the pike. And as a reminder, MERP is the Municipal Energy Resilience Program with the $500,000 that we can apply for. So I'm going to basically just talk to her about where we are right now in terms of, um, you know, our thoughts on the town hall renovation and how we could leverage this money to pay for a lot of repairs if we do get um, town approval for uh, renovating the town hall. So if anyone's interested in joining, you are more than welcome to. Um, if there's more than three of us, it will have to be warned. So. I'm going to try to attend. Try. So if you and I are both there, yep. um, if anybody else is, yep. we should warn it. Yep. But my intention is to be there. Okay, great. Where, what, what time and where? It's, uh, what time was it? Two o'clock maybe it on Thursday? Thursday, two o'clock, I believe. On, and, on my Zoom. Eight, the 18th? Uh, yeah, the 18th, uh, yeah, two o'clock. It's a Teams meeting. And it's not, it's not something that I want the public to join in on. This is really a, like a preliminary conversations, but if there's someone on the, you know, that's interested in joining this meeting they can. Can I just get a straw poll from you guys? How many of you want me to put the building plans that I sent you, the very, very rough building plans, how many do you want me to put them on, on the web, yes or no? I sent those to you last week or before last week. I put them out there. Okay, yeah. fine. I just need your approval. I said, yeah. Sit down yeah. If you want to do. yeah, it makes sense. To All right, fine. I had planned on, and I just haven't gotten around to it, having Lowry put it up on the What's Next Middlesex under, he has a tab for the town hall. Um, so it can go on the main website too, but we also, we could include the minutes of the meeting that we had so that people can look at it. So would you prefer that I did that? or you? Oh, could, we can do both. Well, we can do both. Okay, that's great. More is better. Yep. Anything else, anyone? We need to sign the orders. Yes, I've got those there for you when I'm just finishing. Here's the payroll one. I'll just sign it. Um, yeah. So are you guys adjourned? Yes, we're adjourned. Shouldn't I?